see wow, how you want too early. Welcome out to the Epically Geeky Show, episode number 143. I'm your host for the evening, Eugene Stevens. Tonight's opening question is, what movie would you like to see a multi-hour director's cut of? Um, Ray, what movie that, that hasn't been done yet? Let me clarify. Yep. You can't yep. you can't yep. say The Lord of the Rings because that's been done. <laughs> We have a 12-hour version of each one now. There was a joke running around about that, saying there was like a 30-hour version of the movie, and I'm just like, no. 17 like endings. Yeah, yes. like, no. oh That's where it would be. It wouldn't even be – every every shot up to that point would be the same, it, but it would be 30 endings right. at the end. Yeah. So. Um, so I did think about this one, and, and I want – a Bumblebee extended version, so we sp- spend more time on Cybertron and with with that whole war and maybe like leading up to that war and that that battle and like I'm like yes sign me up. <laughs> I cannot believe I didn't think of that, but you are a hundred percent right. Like the the parts with the, the actual movie movie or whatever I I liked I I did yeah. like the Bumblebee movie. Um. But you're right. That's it. Those scenes that were on Cybertron were fantastic, and I would have loved to have seen more of that. Yeah. So that's – yeah, that that's a good one. Give me a four um, out of that. <laughs> uh, returning, we've got Cyrus Martin. What's going on, Yo. man? Ah, not much. Not much. What movie would you like to see a multi-hour director's cut of? I have two that I'd like to suggest. Okay. First, Kill Bill. Okay. Because Kill Bill One and Two is awesome, but I feel like there could be a more blood. Be, there could be a more comprehensive version. Okay. You know? Um, but the real one that I want to suggest is Ninja Turtles, nineteen eighty nine. Wow, really? Yeah. That would be cool. Following Ralph around, yeah. Yeah, getting to know the characters more, more in depth about Shredder and the history with the old. You know, I remember the uh, Himato Yoshi and his wife, and and what Splinter was like before he, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's so much I'd like to know about that universe. Oh, and Casey Jones. Yeah. Dude, how much could we learn about Casey Jones? April O'Neil. April could. We we want to find out how she got behind on those Sony payments. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's there's so much that, you know, even like the kid and his dad, you know, the guy that was like in charge of, uh, you know, her her boss yep. and everything. There's so much that I'd really like to know about more depth and all those kids that were at the, you know, that uh, were like uh, stealing stuff and everything. You there was a few of them that sort of stood out. I wonder what their stories could be. You know, see, and I was primarily thinking when you said that, I was like, man, if they did add a bunch of stuff, a lot of it would probably be the turtles in the suits, which would be fantastic. Because, I mean, yes, everything else was awesome, but we were there to see the turtles. And thank God in that first movie, that's what we got. We got a ton of turtles Um, still kind of broke everyone's brain when Raph starts cussing. You're just like, what? (laughs) This is this is real. His voice was a real movie. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. yeah, yeah. The grittiness, the, the, I mean, just a, oh man, one of my all time favorite movies. Just that, like, uh, go ahead. That movie made me like Ralph the best. Like, I thought, I, I thought you Mikey. were saying it made you Ralph the best. I, don't know. <laughs> I liked Mikey the, the best before. Uh-huh. And then like as a kid. And then after that movie, I was like, no, Ralph is my favorite man. Like that's, that's yeah. Weird. Oh, everybody fell in love with him. In fact, yeah. I, I I I absolutely thought Ralph was awesome, but actually I kind of fell in love with Leo Leonardo because you saw like he was really trying to do the right thing and and bring them together and and keep everybody you know remembering what was important you know especially like you know those moments like when he's what wa- wa- when he's like taking care of Ralph after he got beat up and when he's trying to get all the guys to, you know, to work together and everything, they had a great dynamic there. You know, I know that it's sort of just a live action cartoon, but it, but that it works. It works so well. You you basically had 
you had Wolverine and Captain America on screen together, and then you had Ant Man with like Mikey, right? He's the comic relief, and yeah, like it was it was great. Donatello. See, I was actually we Donnie needed more like Bruce. We, we needed more Donatello, really. Yeah, we did. And see, that's what that that was one of the things I really gleamed onto was I liked uh, Mikey and Donnie's banter back and Donnie forth because it was hilarious. hilarious. Yeah, Donnie was hilarious because yeah. Mikey was the clown, but Donnie had the good lines. Oh yeah, yeah. The, Donnie was great. And Corey Feldman, right? That he did that. He did the voice for Donnie. I think so. Yeah. So, Nobody yeah. else could do it. After he did it, I was like, Hey, that's Donatello. I don't want to hear anybody else do this. That's not Donnie. <laughs> um. I was going to pick Jurassic Park. Um, really? really? Yeah. Um, I would have liked to have seen even more explanation into the uh, some of the scientific stuff. I know they kind of had to condense it, which is fine. I would have liked to have seen some more of the scientific stuff. But um, they apparently had planned like a scene with a stegosaur and a couple of other things. And they were just like, no, it just can't fit it in here or whatever so uh yeah i think i think seeing you know what might have ended up on the cutting room floor from uh from steven spielberg would have been interesting so yeah i mean i think that see the thing is like okay ninja turtles jurassic park they have a very good pace like they do like adding to them could work but also these are fine how they are but yeah so I'm not saying these movies need more, but it, yeah, you're right. It would be cool to see this extra stuff that adds layers of things you didn't realize were really going on or more depth to certain characters or situations, bringing in scientific elements like you're talking about or things that you'd be like, oh, well, that makes this other scene mean this now and you know all this kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So that would be cool. Yeah, I got you. I feel you. Um, now, uh, in contrast to what you just said about these movies are perfectly fine the way they are now, and this would just be adding to them, maybe for their – possibly for their detriment, but probably not, possibly for their detriment. Um, tonight's main topic is about a movie that um, had to have had this addition to it because what we originally got was – not good. Oh, uh, no, by not. this point, it's been out for a couple of weeks now. This was actually intentional that we waited this long. Uh, tonight, we're talking about the AKA the Snyder cut, Zack Snyder's justice league. Um, before we get into this, I started mentioning this before the show in the pre-show. Uh, I brought this up on a previous, I want to say it was a previous episode of this, of this show. I don't remember. I don't remember if it made it on the episode or if this was a conversation that Cyrus and I had before a show, after a show, maybe just, just whenever. Um, I went and watched Batman versus Superman, mm. colon, Dawn of Justice in the theaters. Colon. Uh, yeah. And much. did not like this movie. Cyrus, on the other hand, did not see it in the movie theaters and watched it somewhere or another afterwards and watched the director's cut. And we tried to get together and discuss. He was trying to figure out, well, why didn't what is it you didn't like about this movie? <clears throat> and I was trying to figure out well, what is it you liked about this movie? <laughs> <laughs> and we started having conversations and it's just like, are you sure you saw the right movie? Did you, did you go watch something different? And I'm like, yes. Like, like he starts explaining things. He's like, well, what about this scene when it's, he's kind of building this. I'm like, that was not in the movie that I saw. <laughs> like that is, that makes sense. Like that totally, that makes sense. Why someone did this instead. Cause in the version that I saw, it was just like, Oh no, I'm here to kill Superman. Okay. Why? <laughs> like there's no, there was no buildup. So anyway, I want to start off by saying this. Before we get into this movie, there's even though Zack Snyder had decided, you know, he's he's you know, it's come out. He had this huge plan for all these movies and this whole universe. Unless something changes, uh, we're, we just have essentially a trilogy. We have uh, uh, Superman. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Man of Steel. We have Batman versus Superman. And then we have the Justice League. Um, I just wanted to bring up a couple things for Justice League because or uh, for uh, Batman versus Superman, because. They do heavily lead into this. Um, so you, we see Luther talking to Steppenwolf at, at the very end of this movie. That was not in the theatrical version no. at all. 
So when Steppenwolf shows up and we start getting this stuff about the mother boxes, we're just like, okay, this is out of left field. Uh, don't know what you're talking about. Oh, cool. Um, we get this, we get this better idea of Luther's plan. So Luther's plan is to discredit Superman. We get a little bit of this in the director's cut, but in the, I'm sorry, in the, in the theatrical version, but in the director's cut, like it's very clear, like he's doing all this stuff to discredit Superman. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. To discredit Superman. Um, we see him just out and out kind of like, I mean, Batman steals it, but he's like, all right, here's the tool you need to kill the, the Superman. Um, that made sense. Cause otherwise just like, why is Batman stealing shit? Like Batman's supposed to be the good guy. Like what's going on here? Um, and then we see, you know, uh, you know, and then we have, you know, we have the fight. We have this whole scene where he's like, you know, he pushes Lois Lane off and here comes Superman. That's the way he, that's the way he draws him in. And he's like, Hey, I have your mom. You have one hour to bring me the head of the bat or she dies toodles and gets in a helicopter and leaves. And it's just like, okay, so it kind of makes sense. Now here's where I have a question for Cyrus. Cause I don't know if I've missed something. Okay. All right. His plan was to have Batman kill Superman. He was so, hoping they would kill each other. I think. Okay. Well, here's, here's where, here's where the only part of this movie kind of, Still doesn't quite fit on the rails for me. Mm -hmm. Plan A. Martha kills Sorry. Super. What? <laughs> Martha. That doesn't. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> um. Plan A. Batman kills Superman. So is Batman supposed to be Doomsday? Hmm. I think. Plan B. Superman kills Batman. Is Doomsday supposed to kill? Here's where I don't under I don't understand where Doomsday comes into that. My problem is, is I don't understand where Doomsday comes into this because literally Superman shows up like it's the 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 ship is literally counting down. It's like you got ten seconds left, buddy. Produce the head of the bat because shit's about to happen. It's like Doomsday was pretty much cooked and ready to go. And I'm just like, what was your plan here? Was if Doomsday had if Batman had killed Superman, Doomsday was going to wipe the floor with fucking Batman. Superman barely killed him, and it was only because he had help from Batman and Wonder Woman. I'm just like, what was the plan here, Luther? Like, <laughs> why did you make fucking Doomsday? Like, <laughs> did so, I miss? Now, did I miss something? Some, I th go some, ahead. Just like to watch the world burn. Was... Well, <laughs> I don't think we know everything, for one, because uh, we... We know that Lex Luthor went and studied the uh, information that the computer was telling him all about Superman and all about all the stuff. So he knew a bunch of shit that wasn't revealed. Um, we, I think there was a plan to expand a little bit more on, on what uh, Lex Luthor was up to. We would have gone in that direction in the next movie after uh justice league um but specifically what the plan is there i think uh you know lex luther was like you know i'm going to release this monster and let it go wreak havoc and um you know and then you know if it kills superman awesome right if he's not batman's not going to kill superman okay that that wasn't ever I don't think he ever figured. I don't that. know, man. He got awful. Like literally had Martha. Well, right. happen. Okay. He was, he was like, <laughs> but what I'm, I'm talking about from his point of view, I'm talking about from uh, Lex Luthor's point of view. Okay. Yes. I think, I think he was like, Batman's probably not going to whatever. Um, so Lex Luthor probably had more kryptonite. He probably had some way, some plan in place to take down doomsday Otherwise, you're right. Why release him into the world without some way to do something about that? I think he had something. I think we just didn't hear about it. We didn't get to that point. Um, but uh, yeah, it didn't really didn't bother me as much as it did you. I, I, well, okay, so it was a it was glaringly a bad plan in the in the first one that we are in the the non director's cut, the theatrical version. And I think that's why it it hung so heavy on me because I was just like this. This plan doesn't make any fucking sense. And here I got some more back. As I'm talking to you and as I'm listening to you talk, I, it almost would make sense if maybe it because we don't see we don't see Steppenwolf show up until the very end. Like mm. um, 
In fact, they beat Doomsday, and then it goes over, and there's a SWAT team that goes into the spaceship, and that's where you see Luther down in the water, and Steppenwolf's got the three mother boxes, or you know, it's a representation, and he's showing. I think it would have made sense if like Steppenwolf had uh, contacted him beforehand and said, "Hey," or you know, maybe even like mind control or whatever, and said, "Hey, you know, create this thing so that once Superman dies." The bell's been rung. We can now come invade. That part makes sense. I think if that was introduced before, like earlier on in the movie, somehow, some way, it would have made more sense of, oh, okay, this is the plan is I'm going to go have these two yahoos go fight. Whoever wins doesn't really matter to me. I'm I'm working on this as a project. Yeah, I, I think that what you're supposed to take away is in this version of things, Lex Luthor is this like – mad genius like psychopath Mm -hmm. and he's got plans upon plans and uh he spends quite a bit of time in that little in that area learning about things so yeah i i mean it as it as events turned out obviously he didn't have to do anything about doomsday but i think you know, I I think um, assuming that he had no plan is probably, uh, you know, I don't know I don't know that I would have come to that conclusion. Like we're talking about it. I mean, like I said, we don't know everything he learned and was told in that whatever in that situation that he was in with the you know in the water or whatever that stuff is that. Yeah. You know, so um, and then he was already very knowledgeable about a lot of stuff that like. I mean, the only reason that uh, that Batman and all these people even found out about the kryptonite is because he let them know about it. You know, like true. So I'm just saying, like historically, in- historically in the comic books and in the cartoons and in the games and stuff, Lex Luthor is a man who has a lot of contingency plans about everything, and the, he's just, he he has like 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 uh cutting edge scientific stuff that's always happened even in the you know old superman movies you know he he was like you know we've got this cutting edge whatever thing or whatever so you know and then he's got the in the comics and then the cartoons and everything he's got the big suit and all this kind of stuff you know i'm telling you there if 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 for some reason <laughs> doomsday hadn't been taken down in that there was a plan for that there was okay. a, yeah as we're talking through this, and th- like I said, that's one of the main reasons I wanted to have you on the shows was to help me figure this out. I think maybe, I think it's probably a good idea to assume there was a plan. It just maybe wasn't communicated. Absolutely. As, as, as best it, as best it could be. Because yeah. um, even then, even when they released the director's cut of that movie, um, I know there was probably still more stuff that he wanted to do. Uh, and it was just kind of a, no, here, you can throw some more stuff in there. You know, blah, blah, blah. Um, unlike with our main topic tonight, uh, where they basically said, no, here you go. Like, go make the movie that you had set out to make. And it ended up being four hours and what, two, three minutes, something like that it is a monster of a movie. Um, I am extremely. Let me go ahead and start off with this. So how did you watch the movie? I watched it on HBO Max. Did either of y'all go to a movie theater to watch this? No. Okay. So. Um, not an option up here right now. <laughs> yeah. It's not, yeah. Y'all don't even have the option of that right now. So. What are those? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit. Uh, I, what's funny is that some of the podcasts I've listened to are like, I don't want to go too far into this, but w- to me. It, it goes along with the movie. I feel we need to discuss a little bit of how this movie came about. Mm-hmm. Um, and so in the making of this movie, apparently they were most of the way there. And unfortunately, Zack Snyder's daughter committed suicide. And you know what? It, it, whether you like the movie, whether you like any of his movies, you just have, you have to respect someone who is like, I, I have to step away from, what I'm doing and take care of me and my family. So whether or not he ever, I mean, granted, I like Zack Snyder movies. He's got several movies out there that I really like that all aside. I've got nothing but respect for the man. Um, the same way I respect, uh, um, Oh geez. What's his name? It was in ghostbusters and, and honey, I shrunk the kids and 
Rick Moranis. Uh, Rick, Rick Moranis. The yeah. fact that he he just basically told Hollywood, "Bye, I have to go take care of my family." Um, so I've got nothing respect for the man. So he steps aside, and there's some back and forth as to how we get our next director, but it's Joss Whedon, and I've heard that the uh, I've, I've heard that Zack Snyder had said maybe pick him. I've heard that it was a Warner Brothers thing. Um, but anyway, so uh, uh, Joss Whedon steps in and finishes the movie. I'll even get at that. <laughs> Um, and we get we get the Justice League movie, and it's right about two hours. I think it's just under two hours, and it uh, it's not well received, uh, including by me. Um, it just it's it's very it's very jokey. It's a lot. It's it's kind of lighthearted, especially compared to the other two movies that we've seen. Can I jump um, in for just a second? No, go ahead. Jump in any time. Okay, so. You need to understand something. Around this same time, um, the Marvel movies were going through some controversy because people felt like that uh, in what was that one with the robot? Uh, the Age, one of that, Ultron. Well, Age, of Ultron, yeah. Age of Ultron. They're like they're not caring enough about the 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 consequences of all this damage and catastrophe that they're doing and we really need and people are you know they had seen people kind of had like an overreaction to like man of steel already because they were like wow there's like all this you know uh, you know all this like you know damage and right we right. have to go back and touch on that in a second did, go on. did did they evacuate the city before they yeah right 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 <clears throat> so that was weighing on audiences at the time because they were like yeah, I don't know, man. It's just too much and stuff, you know. And man, this DC stuff is dark. It's so dark. Everything's so serious, right? So Warner Brothers was already, already like, yeah, we really need to lighten things up a little bit. That's why there was two versions of Batman versus Superman because. They were trying to get him to back off of what Zack Snyder does, which is tell his dark, gritty, you know, horrifying story. That's what he does. Uh, and they're like, this is too much, man. And then the shit happened, and they brought in, like you said, Joss Whedon. And Joss Whedon is known for doing Avengers, Avengers, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, yeah. and uh, what's that one sci-fi show that everyone loves? The uh, My Brothers. Firefly. My brother's yes. nuts about that show. It's like his favorite show of all time. Yep. People think Joss Whedon is like, hey, he's a fun, awesome dude who does awesome stuff. And I'm sure if, and I don't know, you know, um, maybe Zack Snyder was the guy who said, hey, bring in Joss and do this. I don't know. But I can tell you this. There's no love lost between those guys at this point. Uh, and uh, there's, and when Joss Whedon came in, he absolutely did do what, what what they wanted to the Including, point of supposedly I've heard thou shalt make this movie two hours and less yeah, so that we can get in one more showing during the day and maximize our exactly. box office returns. Now in order to make that happen, he cuts most of the movie out and reshoots it and changes. Not I, when he, when you say reshoot, it makes you think like, Oh, he's just kind of altering it a little bit to no, no, no. He completely shot a different movie, and it was very jokey and very fun and hip, and it had a bunch of weird jokes that didn't really make sense and kind of pissed people off actually. There but, was definitely messes. But I think that that is sort of a reflection of the whole Joss Whedon influence because for whatever reason. And I don't know what that reason is. There was some, uh, there was a, the atmosphere was very different under Joss Whedon. Let's just say that. And it, it, it comes across not only in the movie, but in like the, uh, the junkets where the stars talk about the movie and how they feel about it. And of course we've heard since, you know, uh, Ray Fisher talk about his experience with Joss Whedon 
Gal Gadot. Yeah, Gal Gadot yeah she has. Apparently, was that today or yesterday? Yeah, it's. Ben Affleck has said some things. Uh-huh. So it's pretty obvious. Um, oh, and uh, Jason Momoa has said some things. It's pretty obvious. Uh, there was some conflicts of personality that took place. We'll say that. I'm not going to get into more of that. Y'all can, if you want to, but there's, this is a whole thing on the internet. So, yes. um, but yeah, there's that, right? Um, plus we should point out that by the time Joss Whedon was hired to come in and retool this movie, other, some of the stars had moved on to other things like <laughs> Henry Cavill. Must have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What the actual crap? Mm-hmm. I saw somebody do a better version just using um uh what the, the deep hell's fake it thing? Deep fake, yeah. They did yeah. they used deep fake and it looked way better than the millions that they paid. Millions. <laughs> millions to to have it removed. You do you know why they spent so much money to do that? Because because, because the the com- and I think it's Sony that was making Mission Impossible. They were like, yeah. they're like, yeah, he could go do that, but you need to pay us because if you want him to shave his, that's fine. But we're gonna have to add it to our movie. So if you need to pay yeah. us, and, and they they only wanted a fraction of what Warner Brothers ended up spending to create <laughs> this monstrosity. <laughs> yeah, it's much. Oh, who would have thought it would be easier to add a mustache than to take it away. They thought, oh, it'll be easy. We'll just... Uh-huh. <laughs> just yeah. <laughs> be fix and post. Yeah. You can, do, you can fix that. No problem. CGI. Oh, yeah. CGI. You can do anything now. <laughs> so, uh, like you were saying, so we get this movie. It's not well received at all. Um, and we start getting... The, we start getting this, this this rumbling from fans that are like, well, I'm sure Zack Snyder had he he's already he he did a version and it's gonna be way different. It would have been way different than this. It probably would have been much better. We want to see that. We want to see the Snyder cut. And then you, you start hearing from actors that well, we had these different scenes and you get these little snippets of people coming out. And that's where the crazy thing was. So at first it's just like, okay, it's crazy fanboys being crazy fanboys. We want to see the Snyder cut. And then like you said, we start getting these little hints that. Well, actually, we did shoot this scene, and it wasn't in the movie, and it's just like, no, it's a thing. We have to have this, yeah. and it just kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going, and every, I, I'm, I'll be very honest with you. I was a hundred percent wrong on this. I thought for, I was just like, just shut up. You're never going to fucking get a <laughs> Snyder cut of this movie. You and know then what? when they announced it, I seriously was like, y'all are bullshitting me. You, well, Warner Brothers is not doing this. Right. So first of all. We thought there's no way it would ever happen because it's fucking never happened like this. So whatever, shut up. But for the other the other side of it is, we didn't really believe that he had shot this whole other movie, you know, to yeah. the point to where when this thing is coming out, you're talking to me about the aspect ratio and you're like, I don't even believe this is really what he planned to do from the beginning. Because who would have... Th- who would believe that? No, ex- no, and I, I'm complete. Yeah, and I will stand by that. Like I just, <laughs> I'm just like. But then but, when you find out, it's like, well, they dumped what thirty million dollars into this movie, and it's like, yeah, they had to go back and do the the post CGI stuff on the stuff that was already shot. The only stuff they've shot was at the end of the movie, and that was like the Batman Joker stuff. And I was just like, so seriously, the rest of this movie was in the can. They just had to finish it. Like, holy shit. Yeah, holy shit is right. Yep. And I'm sure we're going to get to this, but to the point to where there's scenes that you're angry that that we didn't get. Like there's scenes that I was like, yeah. are you effing kidding me that this was cut? Mhm. What a completely different experience. Oh yeah, it's a, it is a completely different movie than than the, than the theatrical version. Um, so you've already brought it up. That was the next thing I was going to talk about was the, um, and I'm very glad that they had the forethought 
on HBO Max to put a thing that literally comes up as soon as you click the movie and it's, it does its little thing. And the first thing that comes up was we're presenting this in four by three to go along with the end. And I'm just like, I had heard about it. Like when, when people started talking about it, it's just like, Oh God, seriously, people come on. Like we fucking got the movie made. Quit joking. And I'm just like, Oh no, this thing is really in four, three, the fuck. Um, but yeah, I could not, I couldn't understand it. But then you explained, Oh no, he wanted this thing shot in, in IMAX and was wanted it to be shot or, you know, shown in IMAX. And I'm just like, you know, it's actually deeper than that. The okay. cinematographer did an interview about this. The cinematographer, they asked the cinematographer, they're like, was this really supposed to be four or three? Cause nobody could believe that. And he's like, I'm going to tell you people something. And you, and he's like, you can believe me or you can not believe me. But we talked about this like two years before we ever shot the movie. And it wasn't in 4x3 for IMAX. It was in 4x3 because this is how movies used to look until the 60s when they started making everything widescreen. And the original Superman was in this aspect ratio. And that's why this is in this aspect ratio. Which they they did it in that aspect ratio for better uh, vertical, right? Like it was better. Yeah, that's what I heard. It was the same aspect ratio that the original old school black and white Superman from back in the day was shot. And there is going to be a black and white version of this movie, by the way. It already came out. Oh, it did come out. Yeah, you can watch a black and white version on HBO Max. Oh, it has more scenes in it. I heard. What? Steve, yeah. But I, I hold on. I'm I looking at sure. <laughs> But some of some of it, uh, some of it changed, but not a lot of it changed. The uh, from what from what I've, I've already well, given this movie four it, hours of my life. I can't do this again. It's just for the super fans. It's not. He said it wasn't something that regular people would care about. Yep. So it's what is it called? The black black and white edition or. Um, they did the same thing for that movie. Uh, Zack <laughs> Snyder's <Gray>. Justice <laughs> League. Justice is gray. Okay, Justice is gray. They I'm did sorry, the same thing. Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League colon Justice is gray. <laughs> <laughs> what was that movie? Uh, Mad Max, the Chrome edition. They did they did something similar. Oh, well, that's interesting. It says four hours and two minutes. So I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, but anyway, I, I don't know either. Yeah. Man, that's kind of interesting to watch it. That I, I don't know what that would necessarily add to it, watching it black and white. I will say, I don't know if y'all remember this, when the first season of The Walking Dead came out, they redid the first episode in black and white, like the comic, because the comic, the the comics for uh, Walking Dead are black and white. They re they released it black and white, and I have to say, it. I really kind of wish they had done that entire show in black and white. It would have been. It would have oh, it would have added something to it. It would have been awesome. Anyway, black and white is fascinating. It has a, a completely different. It you have to use your imagination more, and I think yes. that adds a lot to it. Well, look at look at one division, right? They did that whole aspect of uh, in black and white for the first two episodes uh, with just hints of color as it came through, but they actually had to alter um, uh, uh, Vision's color in in the black and white to make it look lighter so that it actually matched up to what it would be in regular colors so interesting uh, it was really cool really cool that they did that they used to in when they shot the old black and white movies people wore green makeup you believe that yeah i heard of that that's crazy strange yeah yeah some of the yes if you go back any time some man watching some old documentaries and stuff on some of those old movies some of the old stuff that they had to do was just just crazy. I still love yeah. the fact that it's like, and in fucking Psycho, it's like chocolate syrup. Chocolate syrup. Everyone's like, this is like the best looking blood ever. He's like, yeah, it was chocolate syrup. <laughs> so hey, you know what? Hitchcock was the master. He knew. Oh what he yeah, was doing. He, oh, yeah. He knew oh, what yeah. he was doing. Um. All right. So the next part of this, and I heard someone bring this up, and I have to agree with it. But uh, the runtime for this movie is four hours and two minutes. It is a long movie. I don't have a problem with long movies. I don't have a problem with watching this one. Now, granted, I don't think I ever paused it to get up to go to the bathroom. I'm thinking about that now. I don't remember if I did or not. 
I would I'm glad I got to watch it the way I did because if I had watched this in the movie theater, I almost guarantee I would have been like oh, when can I go because my god, I've got to go F- like fucking Infinity War kill or uh uh, uh end game fucking killed yeah. me. I was just yeah. like Come on, let's get this going. <laughs> oh, it, it's one of those things that's like I now have to start looking and be like, all right, do I get a small or do I get a, a large? Because I don't uh, get drinks in movies anymore. Yeah, if I go it's to the like theater, two I hours. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, four hours. Um, and I'll, like I said, I've got something else to kind of add to that here in a second. But anyway, so let's so, let's talk about this. So with it being four hours, uh, and I had nobody else in this house that wanted to watch it. I always started watching it after everybody went to bed, uh-huh. which means I got um, an hour and a half into it and then paused it to go to sleep. Yeah. And then I woke up and then I watched another half an hour where I could. And then I woke, uh, the final morning I woke up uh, and everybody was still asleep and I watched the final two hours in like that third day. So I, I watched it over <laughs> different sections and that was one of my i don't want to say complaints i don't want to say it was a complaint about this movie but i was like i almost thought maybe it should have been two hours and i'll I'll go i'll swing back around to that in a second like two two two-hour movies that was one of my first comments was i I almost think it should be two two two-hour movies because and i don't don't try to quote me as to what section it is but literally at the two hour mark i was Mm -hmm. like there's actually kind of a natural break in this movie like it it really kind of could have been yeah. The reason I'm I'm saying I'm swinging back around to that is because after hearing about the 4.3 ratio, after hearing about all this shit was already shot and everything else, I'm just like, okay, they are fine. They literally told him make make the movie you wanted to make, and that's what he wanted. So I'm not gonna argue with the artist on this. Like this is this is one of those situations, one of the few situations, unless you go way back into movie history, where it looks like. The director actually got to see what he wanted to see, and the editor like didn't step in and, and fuck around with it at all. Because, I mean, that's the thing. Pretty much every single movie, no matter how good or how bad it is, it's a it's a you know, you can talk to anyone in Hollywood and they'll say, Oh no, the writers. The writers are the ones who make the movie. No, 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 no. The director. The director's who's went, No, no, no. The it's the editor. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's all three of you. There's a there's and of course there's a bunch of other stuff that goes into it. It's the actor, but there's this tug and pull between those three of, of how everything goes. And this one looks like it actually was like, no, this is what I set out to do. And this is what we got. And I'm like, all right, cool. Four hours, 4.3. That's what you wanted. That's what we got. So no argument there. All right. Um, I didn't like going it step by step. I mainly wanted to kind of talk about specifically to me, um, the characters. Mm. And so I want to start with the flash. Hmm. The Flash, along with this next character I was going to bring in, is a completely different animal yeah. in this movie. In the first movie, he's kind of, oh hey, I've got some cool zingers because hey, I'm the Flash, I'm 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 sharp, and some you of say- those original jokes are still in this movie. Mm-hmm. But in this one, the way we literally are introduced to him, it's like, oh wow, this guy's an actual character. <laughs> so for me, it was almost like they like in the original they wanted to capture some of what like the x-men had right where with quicksilver and they were always oh, jokey and he's that kind of thing because was that the original uh quicksilver was already released right with x-men oh, yeah. so yeah. because it felt like maybe that's what they were trying to capture with the flash. i really i don't know what the fuck the, i'm sorry i don't mean to cuss i don't know what oh, they you, were you yeah. cuss all you want the, yeah, man, oh i don't know the rules here <laughs> i'm not, i never come here anymore dude we wear <laughs> blue go for it um anyway i don't know what the plan was for him because if you if you if you if you allow your brain to remember and i'm sorry to do this to you the the uh the the uh joss whedon version i don't know how else to refer to it the first yeah. version of the movie justice league the, the Justice League. The 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 Flash was a pussy. Like he was like Batman's like, I need you to go in there and save, save one person. And he's yeah. like, But I've never fought anybody and I just yeah. push people and run away. And and he's like, just do one person. Yeah. Okay. And like then he trips and falls and lands on uh you know, Wonder know. Woman and And has that awkward <laughs> And he writes the shit on the dude's face, and 
It's just so like, what are you doing to the flash? People were very angry about that. Very Wasn't, angry. Weren't we introduced to him in the other movie? Like when, when he literally walks in his lair and Batman's there, wasn't that the, the only introduction we got to him, I think? And the other one, because I know the way we're introduced to him in this yeah, one. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We see him talking to his dad, and his dad's like, I'm no good. Like, fucking give up on me. And he's like, no, I, I'm I'm going to try to help you out. And then we see, I don't know if we saw that, and then we see the part in the... the you saw the, 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 the scene with the wreck and everything first. Okay, that's so the that's first... the first scene. So, yeah, so yeah. he's going for an interview for a job at a pet show, at a pet store. And this this wreck starts to happen, and that we... Number one, I love how they handled it. The I like how the lightning starts to appear, and it's just oh, like the crackle. Him, him coming out of his shoes, right? His his yes. shoes just tearing away. Like that was awesome. What's and, so what's so important about that scene? It's the first scene you're seeing him, and he's a hero. Like he's yes. not like oh I don't know what to do. Like no. he just snaps into action. Yeah. And and goes. Yeah. And like someone else pointed out, I thought, okay, so they're going to keep some humorous parts to this. So during all of this, uh, you know, this part where he's saving the girl, he sees a hot dog flying in the in the air. And so he grabs the hot dog and you're like, okay, so they're going to keep him a humorous character. And yes, he is still a humorous character because whenever he ends up saving her and goes back to real time, he's making these kind of quick jokes and this, that, and the other he didn't grab the hot dog for himself. He grabbed the hot dog to get the dogs to like him so he could get the fucking job. He had a plan. He was thinking ahead. He was he was an actual like that's he what wasn't the smile an, an was idiot. about. Yeah, exactly. He wasn't an idiot. He actually had a plan for this. And it was just like, I actually kind of like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so that was the that was the first character I wanted to bring in. Now, like I said, he actually kind of became a real character in this version of the movie. There's two other characters in this movie that actually become real characters. We'll get to the last one here in just a minute. But the other person that be actually became a real character is Cyborg. Mm. I did not care for Cyborg in the first no, version neither. of this movie. I didn't either. Nope. Not in that first one. It was boring. You didn't, you didn't, under, like, okay. You, it's like there was no, there was no real character there for him to be, right? Like the, that, Joss's vision of him just didn't come. Ooh, I'm a moody teenager, and 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 now I've got all these powers, but I can't, I can't, you know, be with other teenagers because I'm a cyborg, and it's just like, oh, I've fucking heard this story before. I don't really want to hear this story again. Whatever, go be, go do what you're supposed to do. And then this one's like, oh no, I understand now why, because like, you know, you were trying to impress your dad, and your dad was always gone, and so they've got this. There's a strange thing in this movie. That almost everyone in this in this movie has some kind of family issues that they're trying to deal with. Of course, we we flash back. We did we do get the scene, you know, of Batman and going back and, you know, of course we've always got that baggage. But like you know, uh, you know, Superman's trying to start a family with Lois Lane, and of course you know he lost his dad and he's got his mom, which I want to remind me. I gotta go back to here in a second. Um, but like you know, Cyborg's got his. You know, he's got his family situation and Flash has got his family situation. And it's just like, it's very family oriented. Like, yeah, like very. everyone is. Yeah. And, um, and Cyborg's dad, I don't know if you were planning to talk about him. Go for it. Totally. totally. I mean, you didn't yeah. even know this guy at all. And no, you you see that his dad is a major part of this movie. And oh. you see him. He's not just this absentee father, or whatever, scientist or whatever. He's like trying like hell to to help and do everything he can for his son and and make up for his obviously his mistakes that he's taking to heart you know yeah. what, what a totally different character i mean to the point to where he sacrifices himself you know because he knows if his son can save the world yeah. you know he just needs that chance and before the uh, at the beginning of the episode, we're talking about Ninja Turtles, and, and one of my favorite parts of the movie was the banter between Donnie and Mikey. I loved the banter and chemistry between Flash and Cyborg. It was so There's, much different this time, wasn't oh it? Oh my God, yeah. yes. The yeah. scene where they are digging up Superman, mm. and he's like, "You know, I can do this in like half a second," and he's like, "Yep." 
It's just like, no, <laughs> this is this is how we do it. This is how we show respect. We're going to do it by hand. And he's just like, cool. All right. I'm, I got you. Yep. Yeah. It's just they actually had a kinship. Yeah. And, and and of course, and whenever they go to fight Steppenwolf, it's those two guys. It's like you get there, you do your thing and I'm going to do my thing and it's going to help you do your thing. And like those guys were those guys bonded and you felt that through this movie. And I really liked that. Yeah. Um, it, you know, there was so many small things for different characters like that. Um, not to move too far away, but I just like to mention I loved how you were talking about family seems to be a recurring thing. Is that Chris? What's up? <laughs> uh, you're talking about family being like this recurring huge part of this movie, but also Bruce Wayne's character just to, just for a second, I'm not going to go into a lot of depth with him, but he talks about faith. I've never heard Batman do that. Right. All right. Uh, I, uh, that's actually exactly what I was going to talk about when, cause uh, Alfred asked him at one point, something or another about his plan or what, his, what's going on. He just said, have hope, have some faith. And you're right. Yeah, like, yeah, it was so interesting. Wasn't it to, to see Batman hopeful and really trying to be the, you know, the, the father figure for the team to get the team together. And then like, there's a scene where he says, that's why I brought you together. And you really felt it. You felt like he was trying to make up for his failure that got Superman killed. You know, he was he was trying to, you know, fix this and do what he could to bring this team together because they were the ones that were going to do it. You know, he knew that, you know, I'm just a man. I got, you know, he get and that was the thing, like in the in the first movie, he comes across really arrogant. Yeah. And in this movie. He's got the same little one-liners about I'm rich, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it's not; it doesn't come across at all the same. It comes no, across. No, you're right. No. Yeah, it's it, like it doesn't come across arrogant. It comes across as like he's he's. Yeah, I, mean, I that's all I got. Like you people are the gods. I'm just yeah. this dude who has a shit yeah. ton of money, you know. <laughs> and. Yeah. But anyway, I kind of derailed things there. No, 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 no. Actually, oh, no, no. Before I go on to, to a couple of the other ones real quick, so let, let's let's talk about Superman. And I'm going to go all the way back to Man of Steel. There are two – there are, I mainly hear two arguments as to why people didn't like that movie, and I agree with one of them. I don't agree with the other one. The one I agree with is why did his dad really have to die? I mean no one had cell phones. Like it, it he'd already saved a bus. Like – if, if someone saw him save his dad and and said, "Oh my God, the kid saved his he, dad from he, a tornado," he it knew would have been, he knew Clark wasn't ready because they just they just had that argument. Yeah, he knew this wasn't the time. He knew he he knew his son. He knew, and he was hurt. He wasn't going to make it out of there. And the most important thing to him was making sure his son could be safe and, and protected as long as he could. And he knew that this as bad as it was and as horrible as that moment was, was, you know, it was necessary, you know, that was the lesson. I think that that was to teach his son, which is sacrifice. Right. And we uh -huh. see it, it comes back in Batman versus Superman. Right. And, uh, it meant it totally changes Clark that moment it yeah, gives oh, yeah. him because it he keeps referring back to it like we even have a scene you know where he's he's you know seeing his dad on top of a fucking mountain and he's just like right you know. so, so no I, I a lot of people might might look at that and be like eh, it's kind of one of those plot moments and da, 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 and all this kind of stuff and i'm like yeah it is kind of one of those plot moments but this is superman dude um you know um uncle ben dies in spider-man and right true yes and of course batman you know we don't have to go over that again <laughs> uh, but the, oh, okay so like i said back and forth on that one i can kind of understand it here's the one that i totally disagree with killing zod ah everyone says why the superman doesn't kill and i'm just like okay go back and watch that movie again zod was not there to kill superman zod was there to destroy the fucking planet yep I understand they destroyed a lot of shit. 
in that movie, and a lot of people would have died. But I'm like, what did you expect him to do? Because had he flown away to try to bring Zod away, Zod wasn't going to fucking follow in him. Yeah. He wasn't there to kill Superman. He was there to destroy the planet. Well, like He was fighting Superman to make sure he didn't stop the machine to destroy the fucking planet. Like, remember, there was no other option. Remember who Zod is, okay? Zod is the last remnants of a system that that was des- that the entire system was we're not going to have babies anymore you're going to be you're going to be born f- in this incubator for this specific purpose like your life exists for you to be this purpose that's who you are that purpose zod was general zod he was i and he says it in the movie he goes whatever action i take no matter how violent or cruel is for the greater good that's what I'm here for. This is my purpose. I am here to protect my people. You took away my people, right? So from that point on, Zod has no, his existence means nothing. His existence has been destroyed. And not just his existence, the entire foundation of Krypton. Uh, Superman, Clark, has destroyed Krypton. Just Not just like <laughs> physically, but their entire ideology. And that is why Zod is like, I'm going to destroy all of these people and you're going to watch it happen. And you are the monster that has destroyed our people. And at the very end of the movie, like what you're talking about, Zod, he can't exist anymore. He has no place. Exactly. And he gives Superman no choice. Because let's be honest, Zod didn't want to survive. No, he was done. He wanted to cause as much pain and anguish and horror as possible before he died, because the Krypton was gone. There was there was nothing left for him. He was in absolute despair, and Superman knew that Zod was giving him no choice. That's why he screams after he snaps his fucking neck. Yeah. Because he didn't want to. No, he didn't want he, to. He had no option. But that's the lesson that, and people react to it and they go, Superman doesn't kill. You're right. He doesn't kill. And that's why that scene is so important. Yeah. Because that's the, the that's what DC, that's the message of DC Comics. You know, these heroes have to do horrible things sometimes to make to protect everyone, to do what has to be done. Yeah. That, that, you know, uh, Spider-Man, the lesson is, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, to, what is it that they, the, the saying oh, in Spider-Man? With, with, with great, great power, power comes great, great responsibility. Right. With great power comes great responsibility, right? There's that weight of responsibility, right? But you're supposed to be aware of it, and you, you know, and, and, and always be measured in how you do things, right? And in DC, it's like, um, you have to get your hands dirty. That's the recurring theme in DC, whether it's the Nolan movies, whether it's the Batman from 89, whether it's the comic books, that's the recurring theme in DC, not just Batman, but DC, even Superman has to get his hands dirty sometimes. And, you know, Superman is the great savior, you know, the, the leader and the, the best of, of all of them. Yes. But even he, it's not always in your control. Sometimes you have to make the, the best bad decision. I thought it was awesome. I, I, I never understood that criticism where people were just, I didn't either. No, neither did I. Um, all right. So back to the movie. Um, so a couple other movie, a uh, couple other characters, um, Aquaman. Oh, Wow. Aquaman was still a bro, but he he wasn't a total dude bro. And probably my favorite scene of the whole movie is once again going back to the scene where they are digging up Superman. It's just that little quiet scene of him and 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 Wonder Woman just like I never would have thought I would be like ch- you know working with an Amazonian. Like look at us. Yeah. And she's like, "Yeah, I know. It's kind of crazy, huh?" And she it's just this quiet little scene of yeah. Yeah, I, I I didn't think this would ever happen, but here we are. So, you know what my favorite scene is with him? Mm. When 
I can't remember if it was Wonder Woman. I can't remember who it was, but they were like, I thought you said you didn't care. And he said, I never said that. I and think that it was Flash. Look, and you're Flash. right. That, that was fantastic. I was like, wow, that makes so that adds so much to his character. Just yeah. that one moment where you see that look on his face where he says, I never said that. It's yeah. like, oh, wow. Makes you really interested in the dude. You're like, wow, this guy's not who he, who you think he is. Yes. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. And then the change of, um, forgive me, because I can't remember her name, but the uh, the, the sister um, of Aquaman or whatever. I, she yeah, is. I don't remember. I don't remember her name, yeah. Anyway, th- I liked her better in this than mm-hmm. in, in Aquaman because they just totally changed her character and this Well, this you gotta let that go. All that shit that happened after Zack Snyder Oh, I know. You know I know. But what I'm saying though is is I really like this character and I uh I thought it was a it was a better choice. Uh well, what's interesting since you said that is there's a scene he shot that you talked about earlier that's like an add-on scene that was shot later um and he brought back amber heard who plays this character which whatever yeah. people have their opinions i'm not going to get into that yeah, yeah um and she has this british accent yeah. which she had in in snyder's version yes but they decided to change that when they did the other thing yes and he brought it back for yeah. the, i was like all right Okay, so speaking of which, and that's actually what I was just adding to my notes here. Um, so have you seen any of the, um, I guess they're technically, at least some of them are canon, maybe not canon, I don't know. Okay, Wonder Woman, the first Wonder Woman movie, I still think is a, good, a really good movie. Yeah. Um, I think it flows very well with the character of Diana. I think that all flows very well. Um, Wonder Woman 84, not so much. Nobody likes Wonder no. the new. I haven't even seen yeah. it, and everybody's told me don't watch it because they're like it's not good. It's not that good. But, but you know what? First ten minutes. <laughs> oh no, the first ten minutes. <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything else. Is fantastic. Well, see, that's the thing about what happened after they decided to retool the you know this movie. That's a good Every, point. Everything that came after was this other. Warner Brothers conglomeration of sort of DC, but really more, we're kind of doing Marvel, yeah. you know, and it didn't work because DC doesn't work if you do it like Marvel. It just yep. doesn't work. Um, but that's what happened. Yep. So when people say restore the Snyderverse, that's what they're talking about. Yeah. He, Zack Snyder had a plan, he had a vision, and it wasn't just a movie, it was a universe it was a, it was a way of telling the story because they give a crap about dc comics yeah it, so have y'all seen uh i have not seen aquaman i have I'm not i haven't seen it thoughts ray um so i'd like to see a different version of it right like I, i'd like to see the snyder verse it's not a good way to start your analysis <laughs> <laughs> listen there, well, that's there, that's the theme some, for the movies we're talking about tonight though <laughs> yeah there there's some interesting parts uh my oh my god i'm <laughs> just like if i'm imagining like he's talking about my movie like what would you like? Like, imagine this is the movie you've made, and this is how someone starts to talk about your movie. What do you think of my movie? I wish there was a different version of it. I like parts of it. Like, oh Jesus! So, so it's really good. <laughs> I didn't. I found that he was too too bro like. Like, ah, I, I think that that was definitely part of it. Um, Black mantra is that Black Panther. Manta. Manta, yeah. Uh, curious way of getting powers. I wasn't really expecting that. Um, it seemed more like a plot device than anything else. Uh, there were some really cool scenes, but I think my favorite part was that uh, the big bad, uh, like the big 
huge monster at the end was actually voiced by um oh shit what's her name british actress uh mary Poppins. monsters voiced by a woman mary poppins julie it's, andrews i'm julie pretty andrews. sure it's julie andrews <laughs> which is fucking awesome <laughs> Oh, okay. I might have to watch it just to see. I was going to say, I may, I yeah. may have to watch this movie now. No one said that shit. Like, I may have to look that one up. Um, And then um, Suicide Squad. You know, I, there's I have not seen it, and I have not seen, what's the second one? Um, Birds of Prey. There's supposed to be an air cut of Suicide Squad. Really? Yeah. And huh. it's apparently <laughs> totally different. You know, you remember when Jared Leto was going around talking about how, like, most of his Joker stuff wasn't in the movie? Hmm, it's real. Yeah. See, and again, that's something I would rather watch because uh, the I feel like the they had a storyline with, with, with Suicide Squad, and then they saw how much the the trailer got online because everybody was excited with the trailer. Cause I, I'm going to tell you the trailer actually caught me interested. I was like, cool. Oh, then, Warner it, brothers knows how to make a good trailer. I yeah. will say that Warner brothers knows how to make a good trailer. They can but, do that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but then they hired that editing company to edit the film. That's right. That's yeah. uh, no, you can't do that. No, you, you can't do that. You obviously can't. You can, but you can't. No, yeah. you can't. <laughs> no, there re- there really is supposed to be a completely different movie, and 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 he's been saying it for years before even the Snyder yeah. Cut thing became a thing. Yeah. Let and now it now it's getting a lot of traction, and it looks like there's probably going to be an Ayer Cut released on HBO Max for that. That would be interesting. I would watch that one. Yeah, and it, and apparently like it's totally different, like this like the Snyder Cut. Yes. Yeah. So what have you, what did y'all think? What are your thoughts on the trailer for uh, the new su- Suicide Squad coming out? I haven't really paid attention because I think it looked kind of interesting. It looks I, it I looks kind of fun. I haven't seen it because I, I I'm kind of a, I'm kind of let me let me say this. So when AT and T jumped in and bought Time Warner and all this kind of stuff. They, uh, AT&T, from what I understand from the discussions, from the internet discussions that I've seen and been a part of, so AT&T has like total control over HBO and HBO Max and all that kind of stuff. But Warner Brothers has some like autonomy. They have like sort of their own thing. And Warner Brothers is old. It's old Warner Brothers. And they are, mm-hmm. they have... You know, they think they really do think their shit doesn't stink. I mean, Warner Brothers is like they've always been like that. Okay. Remember what happened with the original Superman with Richard Donner. Okay. Yep. It's always been a problem with Warner Brothers. Um, and it's still a problem with Warner Brothers. Fuck, so, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about the Donner cut. Oh my yeah. god, you're right. This goes all the way back to day one. Go it on. goes back probably further than that, but that's yeah, the first, that's the earliest example I can really think of. I, I'm sure they've done this to the, like other movies, big movies that they did, Towering Inferno or whatever. I don't know. This is this has been a problem with them forever. That's Warner Brothers. That's how they're structured. They are a corporate, you know. And like, uh, I don't know, whatever they, they just meddle in things. Everyone it's, it's famous. They're meddling. Okay. I mean, that's why, uh, Tim Burton quit the Batman series, you know, and, and Michael Keaton left, you know, because the meddling, they were going to completely change Batman and they did. They brought in Joel Schumacher. Yep. God rest his soul. Love Joel Schumacher. Lost boys. One of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. But he fucked yeah. he fucked up Batman pretty good, and he admitted it. God bless him for that too. He admitted yeah. it. He took responsibility for that. Anyway, we're off on the subject. But that's what Warner Brothers does, man. And that's why I'm not really interested in the the Warner Brothers stuff that they're trying to push for DC because I know it's gonna suck because they have no idea what they're doing and they don't they have no respect for DC Comics. No, except. And I, I, I'm pretty sure Warner Brothers 
just does. I don't think they even know like Warner Brothers animation even exists. Like they probably don't even. They it's probably siphoning don't, off money and it's a rounding don't issue. Let them know. Don't because, let them know. No, don't let them know because the animated stuff. I don't watch a lot it's, of it, but when I do, it's fucking fantastic. But that's always been the case too. I mean. Yeah. It's always been. You remember Mask of the Phantasm? The, oh my the, God, yes. The, the old Batman show. They I still always... ascertain when people want to ask what's the best Batman movie. I'm like, is Mask of the Phantasm in the running? Because if it is, it completely changes all the rest of the setup. Mask of the Phantasm is the best Batman movie, and it, it's, it's great. It's because it's a comic book. It's yeah. it's it's beautiful. It's a wonderful movie. It's I, I get chills even thinking about it. It's so good. I've seen it probably a hundred times, um, but it's you're right. It's not a real. It's a animated movie, but still, right. it's a, it's amazing. But that's always been the case too. They don't give a shit about animation. Warner Brothers is like, yeah, do your thing, you know, make us the money. We don't give a shit, whatever. They don't meddle with the animation because they don't know shit about it. Mm-hmm. They never have. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. Yep. But 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 a blockbuster? No. This and is about exactly. our rep- this is our reputation. This is you know, we're going to, you know, we're Warner Brothers, you know. So to get back to that question then, uh, yeah, I won't be interested in anything that they're pumping out until they admit that they have one person that's dedicated to a DC version of their movies. So much like mm-hmm. Marvel has one person overseeing the whole thing, th- you know, if they, they need a DC person to oversee all of their movies and and really get something going. Otherwise, they're, they're not going to have a chance. Because that, that was the other thing that I really disliked with uh, Warner Brothers' decision to fast track going to Justice League and going into all these other movies. They were behind the ball with Marvel and they wanted to get fast track and, oh, OK, we're, we're going to catch up to them really quick. And I think it was such the wrong idea. I think if they did a slow build and you really care about all these characters and then to see the sacrifice at that moment, right? Like that would have been so much better. Okay. So someone had proposed this in a, in a, a podcast I listened to when they were talking about this movie. And one of their biggest problems was the length of the movie. And the one guy in particular proposed, he's like, you know what? I liked Flash in this movie. And I also liked Cy- uh, Cyborg in this movie. You know what? Maybe if we had given them their own fucking movies, mm-hmm. this yeah. movie wouldn't have had been four hours because yeah. all of the shit that we saw in the beginning of this one, we would have already covered. And I'm like, yep. yeah, I kind of have to agree with that. Because if we had gotten a Cyborg or Flash movie or, or both of them, like, number one, they could have been really good. But, they, you know, we, we, we could have had this stuff cut out. It is what it is. That was on my notes, and I I, I didn't hit it. Um, real well, quick, so go on. Well, I was just gonna say, you're absolutely right. And Zack Snyder has, <laughs> for years, I mean, before they ever started production on the 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 uh, uh, Justice League, before it ever happened, he was he was pushing for that yep. that they needed to have individual movies, and that was the plan in the very beginning. And then there were, and you know how it is, what it is, everything. He, they forced him to condense everything into into that one movie, which is why he shot it the way he did. He's like, okay, so Cyborg's not going to get a movie. Okay, Flash isn't going to get a movie. All right. They didn't let him have his his uh, Wonder Woman movie, so he had to incorporate Wonder Woman into Batman versus Superman, introduce her that way before she could even get a movie because they didn't believe she could even carry it. They're like, Wonder, that's how stupid these motherfuckers are. They were like. Yeah, she won't make any money if you know we can't. That's they don't know what they're talking about. No. Okay. So because of say, all of them, of all of them, it's probably my favorite one. <laughs> Wonder, uh, Wonder yeah. Woman's very good. It's very yeah. good. The one, yep. But see, that's the thing is, you got to understand. Even like Zack Snyder had to work in the constraints that he had when he was making this movie, trying to make it the first time around. And even with all these stupid rules and constraints and restrictions and limitations and all that, he had made this masterpiece and they, how, Oh, I can't even imagine (laughs) that they threw it out the fucking window. They, they, they literally spit in his face when his child died. Yeah. 
I don't I don't know, man. Like, okay. So I don't know if you guys have seen it. Uh, I, I was going to bring this up later, but this is probably a good time to bring it up. Um, film theory. Uh, Matt Pat. I don't know if you've ever really watched any of his stuff. I watched a few things. So his latest one was how Joss Whedon's version and this version can still exist in the same universe right now. And basically, Joss Whedon's version, right, is the is the is the first attempt at trying to save the universe and it fails. Oh, so okay. so that leads to Batman, right, and his in his dark uh, like nightmare universe. Mm. This version is the next step at their second attempt to try and fix this universe. And it still leads to because Batman hasn't learned to sacrifice himself yet. So there's a there's a third version that could come out of not just uh, it would have to be a third movie now of um, Batman sacrificing himself in a way that would would finish off that whole story. So well, you know what the plan was right oh listen i'm i'm <laughs> all i am all for what was gonna happen man like okay we, we don't have to go into that really i mean people don't that's know, up to you you can look that up if you're interested um I, i'm all for it yeah all for it we've already kind of talked about wonder woman I, she didn't change much her character was pretty steady in the for in the original version carried over in this one Superman yep. actually seemed like an all right dude in this one because he was kind of like, I mean, he was all right in the other one. This one, I, I just felt more sympathy sympathy for him. Like it just. Can I can I say this? They re, by moving the resurrection so far into the movie, adding so much like absence of Superman. When that moment finally comes, when they finally start to even consider, hey. Are you all thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. There's like this excitement it that, that happens at that moment where you're like, oh, wow, they're going to bring him back. And then they totally changed the, the mood of that moment when it finally comes time to resurrect Superman. And it's like, are you sure you want to do this? And the, that's the, the thing is saying like uh, the, the future is taking root in the present. If this, the, you cannot reverse this course of action once it begins. And then like cyborg has this vision and he's like, wait. And you're like, wait a minute, what's happening right now? Are we, yeah. you know, is Superman coming back a mistake? Like, and it's furthering into this whole, like this dread that you're, that you have from, you know, you were talking about earlier from Batman, having to, you know, being contacted by flash and like having these dreams, he's not sure if they're real or not. And he, and he even alludes to, he says later, I think there's something coming, something darker, you know, and it's like a whole name of a chapter and everything. Yep. Um, totally different mood. But when you're right, when Superman comes back, first of all, they changed Lois Lane so much from what bullshit they did in that, Anyway, yep. oh that movie. <laughs> they, so Lois Lane is going to his his thing every day, just going there. She can't move on. She can't even go back to work. A couple of reasons she can't go back to work, but one of them is she's she's just stuck in that rut. And there's not this moment Superman comes back when it's like I gotta call in the big gun and here comes Lois Lane, you know, from the first stupid thing. Mm -hmm. Um it's like she was there because that's where she always was. Yep. There is so much more to to Lois and Clark in this movie. So much more. And when he comes back and then going back to the farm and you, you the swing, the little moment with the swing. And, and just feeling the corn leaf. Right. The butterfly. Like, Do you know how many scenes are references back to Man of Steel? Like there's some the butterfly. There's a ton of them. Yeah, it's like, oh, my God. Because I went back and watched Man of Steel, and I was like, oh, my God, there's so much. Yeah. You have I, watched to a, I watched a YouTube video about it, and it's it's one of those things, just like fucking walking, watching WandaVision. It's just like, 
Fuck, I need to go back and rewatch this again because there's so <laughs> much shit that pulls back in. Like the first the first time I ever felt or heard or anything like that was when I fucking heard about the sixth sense. I was like, Yeah, I know how the movie ends. No, did you know every time red appears that there's actually a good wait, what? Are you serious? I have to go back and watch it. And then like you find out more and more shit. It's the same type of thing. You're absolutely right. Like there's a lot of stuff they yeah. brought back that you would have never noticed unless you like you said had recently watched it. Yeah. Um so the other third the, the third character that I think got a personality in this movie, in this version, um, is Steppenwolf. Yes. In the first version of this movie, it's like, I'm here to destroy Earth. Okay. He's- He's cool. just some jackass, you know? Yeah, he's just some <laughs> weird jackass that's here. And this time it's like, no, like, I have to get back in the good graces yep. of of my family. I, I have to I'm get gonna... back in the good graces of my family, going back to the whole family. Everyone's got fucking family problems in this movie. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, like, I was like, no, I understand why you're here to try to destroy shit. Like, it doesn't, it actually makes sense why you're putting effort. I mean... Otherwise, it's like, no, I'm I'm here to destroy stuff. Okay, cool, whatever. You random some guy I you know because I'm not that deep into DC. It's like, all right, some random fucking guy I don't fucking care about. <laughs> some you know, guy named after st- some '70s rock band or whatever. You know, we we already got this fucked up looking version of Doomsday. Whatever. You know, where the fuck's Dark Side? And then we get Dark Side. Um, but yeah, like Steppenwolf was actually like a character. I actually was just like, not that I was rooting for him, but it was just like, no, I understand your, I understand you have motivations in this movie, and I understand them. They're not super deep, but at least they're there, dude. So and his his armor is this whole thing, and you can watch it and see how it works, and yeah. it's like fascinating. And you know the relationship he has, not just with Darkseid, which he's absolutely terrified of, and and compelled to try to resolve their, their, you know, his failure mm-hmm. and, you know, his failed coup against, uh, what is dark side? His nephew. Is that right? Nephew. Yeah. 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 Um, but then there's uh Desaad who is, uh, this like, uh, sec, this like, uh, advisor figure for, uh, dark side. Cool as shit. I was like, Oh, that's a cool character. But dark side's not even in the first version of this. this no, is- I remember when when I found out Dark Side was going to be in this, I was like, because again we were very skeptical, right? Oh yeah. And yes. I'm like, I was like, oh yeah, they're going to throw in fucking Dark Side like they did with the uh, Doomsday, and we're all going to be like, really, this is a little too much, you know? And that was not the case. Nope. <laughs> they told there was the exact right amount of Dark Side in this movie. Yeah. The exact yeah. right amount. Especially if we would have gone on to have more things to lead up to an eventual big battle with Darkseid. This was the perfect amount of Darkseid yeah. for this movie. And the way that they did him, um, and I have to say, I don't know if this is rubbing off on, like, the one of the reasons I'm kind of excited for that new uh, Suicide Squad movie is because fucking King Shark is in this movie. There's a dude walking around that's a fucking shark, and they're just... It's 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 that Marvel point when we hit Guardians of the Galaxy, also being done by James Gunn, that's just like, yeah, so we have – in the comics, there's a, a dude walking around that looks like a giant shark. Deal with it. Like, that's the fucking universe. We're not going to – we're not going to make it look all goofy. Fucking Darkseid looked and sounded like Darkseid was supposed to look. They didn't give him, like, these bright pops of purple and all this other – like, he fucking looks scary as shit. Like, he's yeah. supposed to. It's fucking Darkseid. So, yeah, I was excited whenever he did finally show up. That was awesome. So, well, so speaking of excited, right, and, and worried about too many characters, when you saw Zeus – Mm. And, and like the all of the the that big fight scene and even the Green Lantern showing off right, uh, that had me excited and I'm like I'm all in like the way that they had the glowing forearms for the gods uh, and everything. Yes, yes, this is awesome. That oh, was the fact should... that we got a fucking Green Lantern. I was just like, yeah, yeah I, that we, blew my mind. We should yeah. also talk about how different that scene is with the Amazons. You know, it's a totally different scene, yeah. and they sa- they sacrifice themselves, falling into the sea to try to stop. The- I was totally different than what it was. You know, it's it's just amazing how there's all these scenes that they're technically in the shit version, but in like the real version of the movie, 
which is the only way I can refer to it. This is the real version. Yeah. You know, it's just amazing how different stuff is. Yeah. You know, and you're talking about uh, Steppenwolf and how different Steppenwolf is. And someone was talking about this online and they were like saying how he seems like this, like you can almost feel like his motivation and stuff. And um, Zack Snyder is like, well, I gave him human eyes. And if you pay attention, the original Steppenwolf just looks like a cartoon. He just looks yep. whatever. Mm. Yep. But th this one, he doesn't look like a person. He looks like this alien, but he has human eyes. And they are very, like, you can, that's what does it for his character. Yeah. That's what really lets you feel his motivation. Because you can see that that fear and that determination and that anger. Like, you can see it because of those eyes. It's very important. Yeah. Snyder knows what the fuck he's doing. He really does. Yep. So will this be enough? <laughs> <laughs> the popularity of this will it be enough i i don't i don't know i mentioned in the back channel i think there's there's a secret spreadsheet somewhere that if it hits a certain amount of money or something that's going to trigger it and they'll be like all right we might give it a shot but i otherwise there, i don't know. there is a there's a lot of uh discussion about this and i don't really want to get into it because there's a lot of uh weird stuff going on as far as theories about things and supposed accusations about what's going on with Warner brothers and them trying to sandbag this. And they don't want the Snyder verse. They Warner brothers feels like it would be um, like the people that are in charge of Warner brothers personally would, they, they think this makes them look bad and it does, but, well, it but sure they, does. yeah. So they don't they want Snyder. Decision. <laughs> That's right. And see, the only the only reason I could see why that might work is yes, I can see how this would make them look bad. But in the end, they're a company. Well, AT and T, they've, got, they've AT &T, got stockholders, and the stockholders AT &T, are going to be the yeah. one that are going to say, no, this made a lot of movie, and basically you had free press building up to this movie for like three fucking years. So, well, here's the yeah. thing: <laughs> the future of Warner Brothers is their online uh, thing, okay? Show to, uh, what is it called? Uh, HBO Max? That's the future. Movie mm -hmm. theaters and, and the old way of doing things, it's not going to be around forever. It's just not. That's just the reality. And the the, the future moneymaker for them is, a, is their, their platform. They launched their platform because and, and and when they launched it, they put their trust into a juggernaut, which they trusted to carry their platform into the future. And that was this movie. This movie, they put they gave Zack Snyder the trust and the money and the backing and the support to launch their entire future platform. And he succeeded leaps and bounds beyond anyone's expectations. So Warner Brothers is going to, I mean, I hate to say this. Um, I think uh, HBO Max is going to do whatever the fuck they want to do. I think AT&T is going to give Zack Snyder a blank check and tell him, finish your vision. Let's get everybody back and do it and, and make this, you know, let's shoot it all at once and put it out however you want to do it and put it out on our platform and maybe make it a series or something, a mini, like two, two seasons or something. Yeah. Cause it was rumored that that's what this was going to end up happening too. And it's very obvious they could have done that because this movie was broken into chapters. And I was just, as that was happening, I was going, Oh, okay. I, I see where they might've have done well, that. I'm glad they didn't. Well, Zack Snyder, Zack Snyder structured this final movie a certain way because I think he wasn't a hundred percent sure how he wanted to release it either. Like, was it going to be a mini series? Was it going to be a two movie thing? Was it going to be a full thing? He really wanted to do a full movie thing, but I think Zack Snyder's not a stupid dude. Like he knows he's worked around all this bullshit for years. He knows you gotta, you know, make it work. And I think that's why he structured his movie into six parts because he, he figured at worst case scenario they'll release it as a series if i as long as i structure it this way 
it's already set up for that. He's a very smart dude. I mean, it works artistically and everything else, yeah, but I'm pretty sure that part of it wasn't the plan from the beginning, structuring it that way, um, because none of the other movies are structured that way. But I, I'm, but it works. It works very well for this. And I really do think AT&T is going to figure this out and restore the Snyderverse, you know? And I think this is, uh, I, 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 you know, I, I just hope Warner Brothers doesn't fuck it up because unfortunately, like I said, they are involved. True. And I, I agree with everything you just said. Yeah. And Snyder has said there's, they have to redo all the contracts to do this, but I think that's the plan. I think that's what they're trying to do now. Uh, they'd be crazy not to. Well, all the, all the stars want to do it. They've I was all say that out, was the thing. Yeah. Yeah. They've all come out and said they're ready to do it. And they love Zack Snyder. And like even the rock came out and said, hell yeah, bring black Adam into the Snyder. Well, that, I'm glad you brought that up because the rock is, he's taken it upon himself as the, like one of the biggest movie stars in the world to champion that cause. He's trying to personally do everything he can to restore the Snyder verse. He's a very smart motherfucker. Oh, yeah. And he knows exactly what he's doing by doing that. Um, so I think with him back in it and with the, the massive success they've had with at and loving Zack Snyder, it's, I think it's going to happen. I, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I do. I feel like it will happen. Now, what will it be? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if they do it, like I'm, I'm, Oh, they have to do it. So this, <laughs> yeah. Like, the, it's such a biz. It, you can't tease that ending with which <laughs> ending. Sorry, uh, that was actually what I was going into next. So my uh, my one of my beefs. I don't want to say my beefs. That, that sounds too much. Like I had, I had a real problem with Russell Murphy. No, uh, it got a she, little. She's always talking like that. When uh, <laughs> it got a little. <laughs> um, Return of the Kingy at mm-hmm. the end. It's like okay, fade to black. But now, here we have, uh, we have Martian Manhunter. Okay. Um, all right. I guess. I mean, you know, part of me, I have to. I keep warring with myself. Part of me is just like, why the fuck did you put that in there? Then I have to think. No, wait a minute. This was his artistic idea. This is what he originally wanted. Okay. Wait. So I understand why it's in there. But apparently, apparently that wasn't his original. Right. Apparently, there was a different person that was supposed to show up there. Really, I did not know that. Oh yeah, yeah. you know who it was? Tell him who? who it was. I don't want to get it wrong, so you go ahead, Cy, because I know you know who it is. Green Lantern. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. See, that would have, to me, that would have made more sense because I'm sure not well, not that any non comic book person watched this movie um but you know as an average person they would have looked at him and like oh so like the flying green guy that was fighting dark side way back when okay this is a different version of that that makes okay anyway it almost did happen but uh zach snyder what, what you're talking about with the multiple ending thing uh that he added these things for a reason (laughs) like he he was like if if they're going to give me a chance to do this, then I'm going to do this and set up something they're not going to be able to walk away from. And that's what that does. Yes, it's yeah. it seems tacked on because it is tacked on, but it's like an end of credit scene that happens before the end of the credits. Yeah. And it's it's there to specifically induce them to see his vision of what's where this is going. Well, it's around the corner. Yeah. Right. It it was very intentionally added on, not just for the audience to to be like, oh, that's cool, but for AT and T to understand, ah, we've got to let him finish this. This is yeah. why. That's that was what that was about. He's a very smart dude. The other part is, and of course, this is what leads into it, is uh the dream sequence. <sighs> It didn't really hit me that hard, I'll be honest with you. Like, I mean, not that I, like I said, I have not seen uh, um, Suicide Squad. But 
I can already tell you right now, Jared Leto is not my favorite Joker. Um, I liked him better in this than I did in Suicide Squad. And I've heard multiple people say that. In fact, someone even specifically pointed out, like, there's a tattoo missing on his forehead, and they're just like, it's yep. almost like that was the point that was too far. It's like, that was just like, well, y'all could have just dialed it back a little bit. I'm not going to spoil too much here. But no, we're here to spoil. Go. Because there are two versions and there will be a new version of Suicide Squad. But at the end of Suicide, the, the theatrical version of Suicide Squad, the Joker is uh, physically disfigured. Mm-hmm. Uh, and basically half his face is burned off. Oh, wow. um, so the reason he doesn't have tattoos is because he literally doesn't have them anymore. They were burned out off his face. Uh with whatever happens that happened at the end of that um but yeah the 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 joker we got to see in the in the theatrical version of suicide squad which most people were really not fans of including me uh again we're gonna see how that plays out with a new version of that but i'll tell you what this little tiny bit this is the other thing that this did and this is why Zack snyder is such a good dude he, you know, by getting Jared Leto, Leto to come back and do this, yeah. not only does it help Jared Leto and give him like a whole new, like the audience seeing, oh, okay, there's more here than what we thought. And yeah. that's really cool. But it also helps uh, with the other version of Suicide Squad to get finished because people are reminded there's a different Joker than what we got to see. And so Jared Leto coming back was huge, not just for this movie, but for another movie, which is, this is all feeding into, they're all, this is like one hand washing the other. These guys are, you talk about a, uh, putting a team together. Uh, <laughs> Zack Snyder's putting a team together and, you know, getting the next version, getting a, a restored version of Suicide Squad will only further the flame of getting the, the Snyder verse continued. Well, you know, another justice league and God, if we could just get that Batman and Deathstroke movie, if there was just some way that could. Still oh my happen. God. Yes. I'm so glad that, that, that managed back in there. Cause I'll be honest with you. That, that was the saving grace for that other movie mm. was that scene because that scene, I was just like, Oh shit. I know how, I know how this can work now instead of, Instead of, um, you know, whereas Marvel went with all the different individuals and we all come together to fight the bad guy, we've already got everyone together. Now we do everyone's individual movies where we get to meet all of the different bad guys. And the next movie, of course, at this point, I'm not thinking, you know, Doomsday or uh, uh, um, what's his face at all. Um, I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is going to be the fucking Justice League versus the Legion of Doom. And that would have been fucking awesome. Because we did see uh, Black Man, and then we saw, you know, the, a version of the, you know, Cheetah in, in the movie and stuff like that. And I was just like, maybe that's the way they're going. Like, if they introduce all these different bad guys and we get them all together, that would be a fucking awesome movie. Um, the one, and it was, I think it was actually the after credit scene in the original version that they dropped in this one, which I understand. It had, it was jokier, it was funnier. I did miss it a little bit. It was just that last scene where Flash and Superman are like, <laughs> "All right, you ready?" <laughs> it, I thought that was fun. But and what's funny about that? I'm glad you brought that up. There's a bunch of scenes that Joss Whedon did, and a couple of them worked, but most of them didn't. Mm-hmm. And all the good scenes, the really good scenes, were Zack Snyder scenes. You know, but because the funny thing is. Zack Snyder's never seen that version of the movie. I heard that. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Nolan, we all know who that is. Mm -hmm. He's executive producer on Zack Snyder's films, okay? And he went and saw that piece of shit, and he immediately went and told Zack he could never see it. He said, That's who it was. I know I had heard something online that someone had seen it and was just like, went to Zack Snyder and said, you can never watch this movie. No, and he was dead serious, and he sat him down, and he said, you can never watch this movie. It will break your heart. And he and because, and because Zack Snyder never saw that movie, he was able to keep his movie in his heart and in his mind for years, working on it on, in black and white on that laptop for all those years, 
and never was spoiled with this other thing. It would have ruined it. He would have walked yeah. away from it. He would have said, fuck it, it's done. It's out there. But he never saw it, so he never had that closure. Thank God Christopher Nolan stepped in and, and did that, yeah. and, and Zack Snyder stayed with it because he still has never watched it. He still has never watched it. There's, it's really funny because like Zack Snyder's a really funny dude, and he's just he'll say shit. Like he's on Twitter and like somebody sent him a a tweet talking and it was like quoting some stupid fucking thing that that Joss Whedon put in and they're like can you believe this was in that movie and Zack Snyder said what the fuck that was his, his quote <laughs> <laughs> he's like because it's one of those scenes or I don't remember what the scene was but it was a scene that everybody's always been like Ugh. and Zack Snyder feels like we do like like. Can you imagine what that would be like to to uh, to know that uh, there is this other version of your thing that you had put so much work and heart and soul into, and it was just terrible, and it was by a guy who doesn't even really give a shit about it, you know? I could see watching it now. Because because your vision has was able to come out, I could see him going back and going, yeah, sure, I'll give it a shot just to see, and then laughing at it. Fuck but it. before up to this point, no, I, I I agree. It would have been one of those things. It's like, nope, I can't. Well, I think I think I don't even reasons... think he would have necessarily. And who knows? He may. I mean, I know there's kind of some beef between the two guys, but I would have been. It would have been one of those things. It's like, well, yeah, it's it's partly his fault, but it's. It's also the fucking people I've been working with. It's also fucking Warner Brothers. Absolutely. Yeah. Probably mostly Warner Brothers, to be honest with you. Mostly. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they set the tone. They told Whedon what movie to make. You know, they were like, we don't like this. That, by the time, I'm telling you, by the time Whedon came in, they had already decided. We've, we've screened this a hundred times and we don't like all this shit. Cut all this out. This is too dark. We got to do what they're doing over here. We got to, we want, you know, Batman needs to be Tony Stark. Figure out how to make that happen. You know, figure out how to make these, the, the, you, you were there. You did this. Go do yeah. this with yeah, Exactly. They, that's, dude, I'm a hundred percent. That's why it was Joss Whedon. A hundred percent. Well, and supposedly I had heard that he also had a pretty big chip on his shoulder getting kicked out by Marvel. And it was all also kind of like, well, fine. Then if, if I can't do the Marvel stuff, I'll do the DC stuff. So, but, um, really is there good. anything else you want to, oh, I'm sorry, go on. This is probably a really good decision on Marvel's part to get rid of him. Yeah. Especially <laughs> well, now. The, here's the thing about Joss Whedon. So there's a lot of people that love Joss Whedon. Okay. And they love the stuff that he's done. I uh, I love the stuff he's done. I love Firefly. I I enjoyed Angel. I wasn't so big on Buffy the Vampire like Chris is, but I enjoyed Angel. Uh, there is, uh, you know, the, I enjoyed the Avengers. I was shocked that they were able to get everybody, every superhero had enough time on the screen that it was all balanced. Like, I I was impressed by all that. Right. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with loving the things that Joss Whedon has done. There's nothing wrong with that. Unless, of course, you love the first version of the Snyder Cut, in which case you're an idiot. But <laughs> but, but nor, for everything else, you absolutely are entitled to like all of the stuff that, that he's done. And you, you have to be able to separate the artist from the art, right? Because yes. I understand there's a lot of talk about the controversies that have come up. You know, Ray Fisher... <sighs> What a great dude and, and what a great actor. We got to see him, at, you know, in Cyborg. We understand now. For years, Ray Fisher was, was you know, people were mad at him because they were like, just shut up, dude. Nobody wants to hear you crying about your movie that, your you know. Your shitty movie that you're yeah. yeah. And finally, everybody was is like, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. But it's not just that his character was destroyed. It's the way he was treated. And so when I say separate the art from the artist, you know, you can love what Joss Whedon has done and we can still have, you know, we can still hold people accountable for their behavior. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that, and that I, I don't like cancel culture. You guys know that. 
We know I this. I, I, I don't like it, but I will say this. Uh, if if you treat people like shit, you can't. You should not get away with it forever. You should not get away with it forever. And if that is what really happened, then I'm glad there's been some consequences. Yeah. But but aside from that, Joss Whedon has done great work, except for this fucking movie. But yeah. in no, in most cases, he's done really good work. Um, is there anything else you you want to throw in here? Um. I, I forgot to completely mention it. Um, so Superman's getting ready to, to, you know, go do his thing. We see lots of different suits show up. Um, thoughts on the black suit. Oh my God. You know how many people didn't see the first version of this and saw this and were like, wait a minute. He didn't have the black suit. Like that's in the comic books. Like why would he not have the black suit? Yeah. The the black suit was abs- like it was to help him absorb more uh, sunlight in the comics. They don't explain that in this movie at all, and who knows why he chose the black suit in the movie? But yeah, it was fine. Well, there is the scene where he flies up into the sun, and it, yes. you know, but they don't explain it. You're right, yeah. they don't. I was just like, fucking black suit's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, oh, and that was one of the that was one of the other comments. Someone. I was listening to a podcast and someone was did not like this movie, was kind of tearing it down. And one of their points, and I have to say they kind of have a little bit of a point. Um, I mean, granted, Wonder Woman got the last blow on Steppenwolf. Like, she fucking decapitated <laughs> that motherfucker. But um, Superman just kind of showed up and was just like, like it, it was done. At that point, he fucking... <laughs> but, I loved how they... I like oh, that, yeah. and and I know some people are just like I, I, some people had an issue with how they dealt with uh, Captain Marvel for Endgame, and I'm like, yeah, she couldn't be there the whole time. She fucking almost ripped off uh, 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 Thanos's head. Like if she was there, the battle wouldn't have needed to happen. So of course something else had happened. I think that's so, a different situation though. Well, I'm saying he is so, but he still shows up and he is so OP in this. Like he just he fucking wrecked Steppenwolf. He did have some help. Like they do, everyone does kick in and does some extra stuff. But it's one of those things. It's just like, yeah, it's Superman. That's why. That's why you know we had that whole thing of when he died, everyone was like, cool. The savior's gone. Like every everyone fucking head to Earth. <laughs> it was like God died. Yeah. Exactly. It was. So. And when he comes back, it's that significant because exactly. Steppenwolf makes a point of mentioning when he's talking to Desaad that there's no Kryptonian. Like he's like, this world will fall like all the others. You or know. Lanterns. He also mentions but, the lanterns. No lanterns. Yes. No Kryptonian. Yes. Because he knows those are the real problem. You know that yeah. that it. The Kryptonian, the the fucking uh, mother boxes were scared of Superman. That's why yep. they didn't communicate until he was dead. <laughs> yep. Which was never in the first shitty yep. version of this movie. No. Yeah. yeah. Any good thing. The other thing about the mother boxes is just like, hey, I'm Steppenwolf. I'm here to destroy everything, and I'm looking for boxes. Okay. What do they do? <laughs> well, we don't really know. They're just boxes. All right. Yep. Cool. I guess. Whatever. Yeah. Oh. So, well, oh, and that. That cyborg was actually brought back to life from the mother box. Right. right? That's, can I yeah. can I say this? There's something that happens in the Snyder versions that's very interesting. So the mother boxes are these objects, but they're given personality. Like they're they're you remember when uh cyborg has like the dream and he he fights with them that you can see they turn into the the wit yeah. the witches right because they're right. the mother boxes right they have that personality to them they're living things cyborg also has this thing with the ship the the big carrier ship where batman's been trying to fix it and get it to run and stuff that's right and, yeah and and cyborg's like she wants to fly you know i think i can you know get it and then like there's this moment where you know, the, and they, he finally gets his flying, and he's like, she wanted to fly. And so you kind of add this this element of personality. There's this moment at the very end when they're all doing their, like, pose at the end, and they're all kind of lined up. 
and the ship comes and I almost felt like ex- I was like, yeah, because the ship, I'm almost feel like it's a character now, you know? Yeah. Snyder added character to objects. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, it's, I thought I've never seen that done in, in a movie that I can remember. It was very, uh, it's just amazing how different, like how different. Cause y- what did you think? Like, when somebody said there's going to be a new version of Justice League, it's like, well, it'll be a little different. No, that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a little different. This was a completely different tone. Completely different tone. Like I said, characters actually were characters in this movie. I, you know, I specifically pointed out the three. I thought Steppenwolf, Flash, and Cyborg were all like rounded characters in this oh fucking my God. movie. And Cy- the, the scene where, and I've talked about this before, and other things that I've where I've talked about this, the scene where Cyborg helps out the mom and and you know the 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 waitress mom with the family. Oh, yeah. Wow, what a powerful moment, you know, that completely defines that character of Cyborg, but also sets up it's so, it tells you so much about the world and and how these heroes are gonna make a difference and you know and what their morality is and. Nah, we'll cut that out. Fuck that. We don't need that. Well, the, in the the whole end recap too, like where like the the end, it's it's his dad's voice. Yeah. Over yeah. that, what a what a moving uh, way to end it, right? Where the other version was just it was Lois, wasn't oh it? Oh my God, you talk about a moving ending. It's the Flash when he has to save everyone after the world has already died. Everything's already oh, happened. God. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the yeah that was the other thing I wanted to bring yeah. up was the fact that in the first movie or in the other movie he saved a family. In this movie, he literally saves everyone. And yeah. and he and he has all these cool. It's like one extended awesome moment after another. He's he's talking to his dad. I yeah. get choked up thinking about, you know, I'm one of the best, dad. Uh, you know, and and then he's like, make your own future make your own past. It's all right now. It's he's realizing this at that moment. That's why he's saying it out loud. And then like everything is reversing. The visualization on that was awesome. I thought it was a very Great. cool way of doing it. Dude. Fantastic. I don't know. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that. That's brilliant. And everybody that I know that's seen the, this movie has focused on that ending scene and been just blown away visually by what's being done there because they failed. The world died. Everything was destroyed. And only the flash, only that character yeah. could do what he did. He was yeah. the hero of the movie, but they, but again, they all were, they had their place in that puzzle, but the flash went from this annoying, stupid little jokey, awkward pussy to the most important character at the end of the movie and a guy just a good dude who you're like man i want to see his movie <laughs> i yes. want to see his movie yeah. you know it was it's funny because the second time i watched the movie i watched it over at my mom's and uh we were my mom was there my sister was there my brother was there my sister's boyfriend was there and when we started watching the movie you have that very first scene with the flash and he was a huge fan of the TV show, the flash TV show. Mm-hmm. And the first thing he, he says it out loud as the movie's starting, he says, wish they'd kept the same actor, you know, cause he didn't like this guy. Cause he yeah. had seen that stupid fucking bullshit version of this movie. And by the end of the movie, he was like, yeah, he did a good job. So that's that, that'll tell you a lot. This movie won over somebody who was a huge fan of the TV show and only really wanted to see that version of Flash and was so pissed because of what, the, you know, that other fucking yeah. thing that happened. Uh, but that that's the difference, man. There's, It's hard to quantify how important this movie is for comic book movies, not just for DC Okay, not just for this Snyder verse or whatever, but really for comic book movies, right? Because but I think it's it's even more than that though. It would be even for fans of movies because I would fans, even say that 
fans made this happen. Yeah, that's true. That's a very good point. In fact, this movie, there's been a lot of speculation that this movie could really change filmmaking because before this, the the structure of how long a movie needs to be and how it's edited and all this, it's all kind of built around the idea of this movie is going to be in a theater, right? Yes. And now there's a lot of talk about, well, maybe a lot of directors like Francis Ford Coppola and different people, um, what's the guy, the Scorsese, different people have come yeah. out and said, there's a lot of stories I'd like to tell that are going to take four hours, you know? And this, this thing that Snyder has done by completely breaking the mold and doing something that can only be done on this type of a platform is, is definitely causing a lot of, uh, a lot of talk about maybe there's a different way to do this. Maybe this is going to be a, a catalyst for something that changes filmmaking. And see, the more I've thought about this, the more I'm like, you know, because everyone was again, you know, TV was where you TV was low, lowercase. Like that was that was that was the minors and not anymore. Like fucking like Game of Thrones, honestly, is what kind of broke that. It's like, oh, shit, you're going to let me tell an entire book over an entire season. Like I can actually get the whole story in there. And that's when Hollywood started going, oh, hey, we can maybe this isn't such a bad thing. And a lot of people started gravitating to it. I think we're getting to a point now where if you're going to make a movie, it needs to be very clear where it's coming out and and the type of movie it is. Now, let's switch over to something else. Uh, apparently, a lot of the people who made that movie, uh, uh, Pixar, who made the movie Soul, are like, listen, we understand it's COVID and it is what it is, but we're kind of heartbroken that it didn't get in the movie theater. Cause that's kind of what we made it for. And I'll be honest with you. I mean, like when it comes to movie theaters, like I see big budget action movies being in movie theaters. I see animated kids movies being in movie theaters and maybe some big drama stuff. Who knows? Maybe even the occasional comedy, but like for the most part, like if I were making a comedy movie, I'd be like, no, fucking release it on Netflix or on HBO Max or whatever. You're going to get more people seeing it that way than anything else. It needs to start being a discussion of where are we releasing it? I, and I, then you can start having those conversations. Well, I want to make a four-hour movie. Well, we're not going to put that in the theater. Are you okay with it being on here? Yeah, from cool as long as I get to make a movie I want to make. I could almost see the reverse actually start happening where the, it's released on Netflix or whatever streaming device. And then if it gets enough buzz and people really enjoy it, yeah. it'll actually go to the theater. And that could happen too. Cause honestly, I think movie theaters are, I think the days of the, 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 the giant multiplex is gone are almost gone. I think the, the surviving movie theaters that at least are going to flourish are going to be things like, and, you know, I was really kind of sad when I heard that Alma Draft House had filed Chapter 11. I've actually done a lot of reading and listening about this afterwards. And I'm like, no, that's actually was a good way. They were like, okay, we're about to start kicking into high gear. Time to cut the fat. Time to re, you know, allocate, redo things that we need to do. I think it's going to be those specialty things. Yeah, you're probably going to start paying more money for movies, but it's going to be an experience. And it's going to be a movie experience you want to see. Because the rest of the movies... Like Godzilla versus Kong, yeah, I probably would have gone to go see that movie because it would have been big and loud and awesome yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But like some of the other stuff that's come out, um, like there's a, a they Netflix just released a trailer for it and I don't remember what it's called. I think it's like Through the Looking Glass or something. It's Amy Adams and it's a it's a um, uh, uh what's it called Rear Move a uh, Rear Window type movie or whatever and it looks right. great. It looks like an awesome movie. I would never go see this in the movie theater, but I'm sure as fuck going to watch it on Netflix. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I agree with y'all. I think this is going to be, kind of be a catalyst of people having conversations of, I want to make, I've got a plan for this grand movie. Maybe not so much in the movie theater. Maybe it is better suited for quote unquote, the small screen. I don't know why everyone is fucking down on the small screen. Technically speaking, there's not a movie theater around here for who knows, maybe even, I don't even know if there is. I've got an, a you know 4K TV in there with a yeah. surround sound. Most movie theaters are not 4K. They're not even close to it. Yeah. And 
it's a fantastic way to watch stuff, but I do still want to go to the movie theaters and, and yeah. watch stuff. So it's, it, you know, it is what it is. So, um, yeah. the more ways we get to watch movies and, and the better movies they are. Cause in all honesty, yeah, we do have situations where, and I was kind of thinking about this, you know, you could always go back and look at the prequels and go, well, this is what happens when one person gets to make all the decisions. And part of me is like, yeah, but technically, one person got to make all the decisions and that went all the way through and no one, no one was going to say, Hey George, no, <laughs> like I'm sure at some point someone went to Zach and said, maybe cut off a little bit here. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That probably would make a little bit, tighten it up a little bit. There's, there's a difference between absolute and, you know, Hey, I, let me get my vision out. So anyway, yeah. um, well, overall, did you enjoy the movie? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. I, I'd rather Joss's vision. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! I'm sorry, you're breaking up. What? What, dude? No, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> In all honesty, uh, I I want the Snyderverse to be real. I want uh, I want to see what they can actually do with all these characters and all these actors playing these characters. I I think they have something special, and I hope that they continue with it. Cyrus? It's interesting to think about. You know, a lot of people who were asking the question, is this movie so good because it's good? Or is it so good because the other version was so bad? Like, people are like, would you still have liked it as much if there wouldn't have been a shitty version? And what's really fascinating is everybody that I've seen, big critics and people online that have asked that question, have all said, no, this is a good movie. This is a very good movie. What and that it really makes me mad because the the Snyder thing it seems to me like you always hear this expression about like how artists are never appreciated in their time you know like an artist will do something and people while it's happening are always like critical and they don't like it because it's different and they can't quite figure it out and then years later they're like oh yeah that was ahead of its time and da 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 and that seems like what's happened here. It seems like, you know, Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman. People were like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I really like Marvel better, right? And then this happened, right? This thing that was supposed to be this movie happened, and people were like, okay, we're done. Fuck it, we were right. Fuck this shit, Marvel. And everybody got excited about Marvel. We all enjoyed the 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 arc that ended in Endgame. We all had a good time. And when this came back, we're all like, what? And now it's like we see it and we're like, oh, my God. Like, the timing was wrong and they fucked it up, right? You have to ask yourself, what could have been for this had the timing been different and they let him do his thing, right? Because I honestly think maybe it was too soon, right? People weren't ready for this, okay? we we It hadn't been that long since we had the Nolan Batman movies, right? And we were in the middle of the Marvel thing. And if they had, eh, you know, whatever, hindsight's twenty twenty, but if they had waited a little longer god what could have really happened or introduce flash first well, yes a and different cyborg right, right. start a, with a, your lower characters get them to start caring about them first yep. why they started with batman and superman and and first of all get them to fighting each other in the first movie like anyway well every they always have to fight that you know this everyone but, the good guys always have to fight each other when they first meet and then usually they turn, they become, hey, now we're friends, now let's go fight the, the bad guy. Well, well, it's interesting because the decision to do that movie was, there's, it, the good and the bad both happened because of Marvel, right? You had Civil War, and everybody was like, Civil War is this big success. Everybody says it's the best one of these movies so far and all this kind of stuff. Hey, let's do that. Let's do DC that. It's in, you know, uh, Batman vs. Superman, right? And yeah, they the timing was wrong, the structure was wrong. 
I think Zack Snyder did, if you really take a look at it, if you're really fair about it, and you look at it how it really is now, and you look at the the Batman vs. Superman Ultimate Edition, Man of Steel, and the Snyder Cut, those three movies. You can include Wonder Woman if you want to, but that's a, that's a separate thing. But if you look at it, man, he did a really good job. Like, he, he had a vision and carried it forward, and it was consistent, you know? And he created a universe that was interesting and, and entertaining. And unfortunately, we were in the middle of the Marvel universe. And I really think that was just, you know, what are you going to do, right? The Marvel thing was the biggest thing in the world. There was nothing bigger than that. It was the unstoppable juggernaut. Yeah. It's just it's just frustrating to me because, I mean, hopefully things can be resolved and we get to see more of this and, and it turns out for the best for everyone. Yep. And, and maybe, maybe Batman versus Superman, I mean, Batman versus Superman, uh, the Snyder Cut, maybe the Snyder Cut is a better movie because of all the bullshit. Maybe it's a better movie and we had a better experience than we ever would have gotten anyway right yes it was his vision but would it all have would we have gotten the four-hour version would we have gotten all this stuff would the, you know you know i, I, I don't know. i don't think so i think we would have gotten three hours maybe maybe maybe, max. maybe right and what would have made it and what wouldn't have made it and you know that's a good point that's actually because there's, see, there's the whole, only a couple the, of scenes that I would cut. There's only the a whole comparison of thing of is it a better movie because of the other one? I'm like, no, not yes, and not really. Because like at, at, from this point forward, yes, I will still refer to the other one just because I saw it. Mm. But this is the this is the version. Like the yeah. other one, I will never go back and watch the other one. There's no, there's no reason to. No. So I bought that shitty movie. Like I I have it on my Apple account. Mm-hmm. Which I don't use, but and it's see, on like, there. And, and, and like, you know, I, I, I need to check. I haven't looked to see, like, the Lord of the Rings movies are on HBO Max. And I'm like, are they ex- the extended cuts? I liked the original versions. But, I mean, let's face it. That's the only version that exists anymore. The extended though. versions are the official versions now. Like, that's... Yeah. And that was funny because I actually heard someone else was talking about that. Cause, you know, going back how, um, you know, uh, director's cuts, you know, they've... Those have been a thing for a long time. Someone even pointed out, um, oh, what's his name? Who played Saruman? Um, apparently, during the, the premiere of, I think it was the third movie, he walked out and was pissed off. And they had to come out and tell him, all of your stuff is in the director's cut. It It's in there. People will see it. But they made us cut it down to this version. And he was like, okay. Um, so, I mean, that's apparently a known thing. But anyway, it's... Yeah, I, I, I it's going it, to these are the official versions like they can, you know, we'll, we'll keep the little lettering on it as to the ultimate version or Zack Snyder's. Ver- but from this point forward, no one fucking cares about those other movies like it's you're going to judge it, you know, from, you know, this point forward. This is the movie. You want to watch Justice League? Here it is. It's Zack Snyder's Justice League. But this is Justice League. Period. The only thing that worries me is like 20 years from now, somebody not knowing and going and accidentally watching the shitty version <laughs> and being like, I don't know what all the ho- the hoopla was about. That movie sucked. And see, <laughs> and see, I I can't. Mm, this is hard for me to to try to defend this. Part of me wants to say, then why don't we just get rid of it? But then I'm like, but then am I technically now backing George Lucas's play because you know the the special editions are the, the official version. It's like, well, I think yeah, that, but as long as we have the original version, it, it's yeah. cool. And so I can't, I can't say we have to just completely get rid of it. We just, Maybe we have to make sure we put up lots of warnings. Maybe there's there should be a warning on the front of it. Warning. <laughs> this is the theatrical version. Warning. This is not the one we are warning. looking for. <laughs> if You know what? Museum, the, like Confederate statues, right? Yeah. Fuck like, yes. <laughs> like we, we should never, you can't erase history. But no, should, yes. But you if should you remember. want to go watch the, <laughs> if you want to go watch the theatrical version, there's a perfectly great reserved copy at, you know, the, you know, Congress. Like you can go, you can go look at it there. If you want to go God watch help it, you. <laughs> go, go for it. You can go watch it there. Uh, really but no, this is like the it. official version. So, 
Um, well, let's move into, uh, does anyone have any picks or pans they would like to, uh, to share? I've got two. I'll just throw out here real quick. Uh, we've been watching as a group. Unfortunately, uh, didn't get to watch tonight and only get to watch last, uh, last week as well. Um, oh, Falcon and okay. Winter Soldier. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Um, it's funny. I, I hear some people that aren't too keen on it. I'm enjoying it. Um, I, I what's, like what's the problem with it. What's, what are people critical about? What's, I mean, don't well, give me the, too specific. Some of the things that there are, some of the things I'm hearing people point to are, um, things like, uh, um, uh, it, it just like to them, it's coming across as like, well, they're not, it just seems kind of vanilla the way that some of these, you know, kid, you know, some of these characters problems are coming across. And I'm just like, no, to me, it seems like they're really kind of diving into it. Like, mm. like you really see, Oh, Hey, so you're a superhero. That's cool. Um, so how do you, uh, how do you survive from day to day? Like who pays your salary? Where do you live? Yeah. That type of shit. Like those are the type of questions we're kind of looking at. So, well, um, and then and then the because somebody like uh, they touched on it in um, Fantastic Beasts as well. Uh, somebody coming back from war, trying to get a loan. They're like, eh, you haven't really done anything in the last five years. I didn't exist for five years, right? For the snap, or if they were at war, is I was in the army. I was gone. Like I just got back. I can't get a job. Like it's. <laughs> yeah, it's funny when because you know I've I've actually heard talk to some people who are in the military and they're like, yeah, it's kind of hitting really kind of host you know close to home. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, you know, so so um, on real issues. So you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm also enjoy. I also enjoyed Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, we talked a little bit about it. I think during the show, definitely during the pre-show. Um, I mean, you can watch it on HBO Max if you got HBO Max and you've already seen, you know, uh, uh, Justice League. Go watch it. Uh, not the not the Justice League. Not the no, not the Justice oh, League. Not that. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, but go check it out. It's yes, is all of the science, science. Uh, is all of the science that they refer to in the thing just total bullshit? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> You're not there for science. You're there to watch giant monsters punch each other and destroy you, cities. You know there's people that are writing paragraphs somewhere talking about, well, actually. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, my God. It, uh, if you have not seen Godzilla <laughs> King of Monsters, the science that they propose in that movie is just you just you can't help but just laugh. It's just like it's but it. it it is it is so ridiculous but it also it is that's what godzilla is like the fucking he's he made you know it depends on which version you're looking at either he's this you know kaiju that's supposed you know it's been around forever and is protecting the world or he was created by nuclear blast doesn't really matter it's a fucking giant lizard you know destroying a city that's what you're here for the rest of it's just kind of filling so you know if that's what you're down for Cool, and I think I think I may end up having to show it to my boys just because um, they might be getting interested in giant monsters and stuff. Uh, you know how Netflix will show like you know other things that you're watching. Um, Pacific Rim, The Black, showed up on there, and they're like, "Daddy, what's that?" I'm like, "Oh, that's based off of a movie about giant robot." Hold on, so I went and watched the. Tra- I showed them the trailer, and they're just like, "What?" And I'm like, "It's giant robots flying giant monsters." I'm like, this is like the best thing ever. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, that looks kind of cool. I'm like, it's fucking awesome. I'm like, we need to watch it. So sometime or another, I'm going to sit down and watch and watch that with the boys. I need to probably need to go through and just make sure the, I don't really care about the language. They already know they're not supposed to repeat certain things. I don't remember if there's anything in there that's a little weird or questionable, but yeah. Giant robots versus giant monsters. Can't beat it. It's like Rampage, but a movie. With, exactly but not the movie rampage <laughs> yeah i watched that one that was not that good mm. so yeah once again once again the science doesn't really hold up <laughs> <laughs> ray do you have a picker pan uh so i'll start with the pan uh we're in lockdown again so yay uh <laughs> it is what it is we'll get through the end of this at some point uh and then my pick will be um got two one is uh so speaking of monsters and a lot of stuff 
we rewatched Monsters vs. Aliens. And uh, I just got to say, I love that movie. And uh, Stephen Colbert plays the president. And that's probably one of my favorite depictions of a president. <laughs> it's fantastic. He is a good president. Someone else who was a fantastic president, in my opinion, was in uh, Mars Attacks. Yes. Oh, my God. Jack yeah. Nicholson. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Nicholson is the fucking president, man. <laughs> what I love about Jack Nicholson is... He doesn't give a shit. He's just gonna be Jack Nicholson. I love, I love, I love watching Jack. He's so yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, my other pick is uh, we've redone our rooms, our our living room and our dining room, with floors and uh, painted, and they're all done. So I'm now making a coffee table. So I'll have some stuff to talk about for creatively geeky when we get to the nice. next episode. So yeah, lots of fun. Y- y'all have a lot more space now, right? Uh, uh, compared to where we were, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought, uh, how are you? All, how, how are you adjusting? To that? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I, they, I, I know that for a long time y'all were like, we're minimalist. We're gonna keep things very simple. Or, you know. Oh, yeah. And 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 we did well for for as long as we did, and we learned a lot. And now we've got a thousand more square feet, and we're okay. <laughs> Like Chris was like, I can collect stuff now. Like she's excited. <laughs> you know what, guy, dude? I'm so happy for you guys. And you know, I nothing against minimalism because I I do I I believe it, it's important. But the thing is, like, I own a bunch of crap. You see all this crap? I was gonna say I'm looking behind uh, you as you're saying I believe in minimalism. <laughs> right. I own a bunch of crap, but that is almost all the crap I own. Okay. Oh. Like I, I have cut out so much stuff from my life and sold so many things that I had. Yeah. A lot of stuff that was back there actually. Uh, recently sold my PlayStation five. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I respect the idea of letting things go. You, you don't get to keep things anyway. You're going to, they're going to break or fall apart or you're going to die something. So you're not going to keep it, anything anyway. So it's good to keep things that are important to you and have the ability to do that, but also have some, you know, uh, be willing to like let things go. It's hard to let things go figuratively and literally. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway, uh, what y'all were doing, I I think was great with the minimalist thing, but I am so happy for you because I know, (laughs) I know what it's like to go from, really trying to make a situation work and be, you know, do the right thing and, and everything, but then going, Hey, there's, we can do something else too, you know? And, and that, yeah. and that seems like, it seems like it's, I can see just from looking at the space you're in and <laughs> it, it just seemed like you're more comfortable and, and it's yeah, a lot better. Got my guitars back there and stuff. Yeah. Uh huh. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's really good. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, you know. Yeah. The we need to be, you know. It seems like maybe people on the internet want to tell each other, "Oh, you should be this or you should be that or whatever." Let people be who they are, you know. Live and let live, man. Yep. Live and let live. Absolutely. Absolutely. What about you, Cyrus? You got a pick or pan for us? I have a lot of pans, but I'm not going to mention them because they're individuals, and we don't like to do that. Uh. <laughs> Uh, I've had some great things happen with me recently. Um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to some, uh, some cool things in the video game realm. And I know not everybody cares about that kind of stuff, but, uh, it's kind of a big thing for me. I have a channel that's pretty much nothing but video games. Um, and I, you know, I've been able to take part in some really cool stuff. So very cool stuff. I'll be, yeah. I'll be very honest with you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's been. Yeah. It, I would like to say that it's all been rosy, but it has definitely not. There's a, uh, there's, you know, with any good thing, there's bad sides to it, and we deal with that every day. The best I can tell you is, and I was kind of alluding to this a second ago, um, you know, we need to be less judgmental of each other and less trying to find fault in each other, and just be willing to you know, relax, lighten up a little bit and appreciate that, you know, we're all human beings. I'm not a perfect person, right? Nobody's perfect. And I don't expect other people to be perfect either. Um, 
But if I love something, if I'm interested in something, that's not a, an attack against you. Like I can like things. That doesn't mean that I don't like something else or whatever. So anyway, my, I guess my, my pick is this awesome opportunity I've had to be kind of at the beginning of something um, that could really be interesting for the world of video games. Uh, you can check out my uh, YouTube channel if you're curious. Videogamevirus.com uh, I'm not going to go into any more detail about it than that. So that's pretty much it. That's all I want to say. Gotcha. Um, well, that is our show for the month, ladies and gentlemen. If you would, please give us a five-star rating on iTunes, Google Music, wherever it is you listen or watch the show. Uh, as always, you can find us at epicallygeeky.com. You can find uh, all of our social media at Epically Geeky as well. Check out the other shows. We've got the Marginally Geeky Show. We've got the Creatively Geeky Show. Uh, we got Sustainably Geeky that Jennifer's doing. Uh, procrastinators might come back from her. <laughs> so I was like, what, what are y'all talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> um, and then, of course, you can follow you know our individual stuff that's going on. Ray, where can we find you online? Uh, the Reluctant Yeti on Instagram. Uh, I, again, I'm avoiding Twitter because it's a cesspool, but yeah. Absolutely. There too. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Cyrus, where can we find you online? Videogamevirus.com. And as always, you can follow my individual wacky adventure online at Optimus Gene on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For everyone on the site, have a good night. Mm-hmm.